So hello friends. This is Bfix. We're back with new fanfiction. So these days we're gonna see. What if Naruto born as a black dragon emperor for authors I have given credits to author in starting of the video by if the original author wishes to reclaim copyright or remove this video. I kindly request before giving copyright strike. Please contact us using the information provided in the pinned comment. We respect and acknowledge authorship rights. And I will delete that specific video by myself. Thank you. So without wasting your time let's move on to the video. No fair Naruto. How can you be so good? Said 7 year old Izumi Hiyodo with a pout as she watched her friend Naruto Uzumaki beat game after game at the arcade, annoyed that he keeps beating all her records. It's not my fault, I'm just lucky. Naruto replied with a grin at the brunette, having always been incredibly lucky when it came to playing games, something that always annoyed his friends whenever he beat them. Then what's her excuse? Izumi demanded while pointing at their other friend, Irina Shidu, who was playing a motorcycle game and is already close to getting the high score. I just practice a lot. You'd be good at this too if you did the same. Irina stated with her own grin, as while she didn't have Naruto's luck when it came to games, she made up for it with a lot of practice. Their words only making Izumi pout, before she soon smiled and joined them in playing more games, refusing to let them beat her at any more. With Naruto and Irina smiling at this before returning to their own games, all three determined to win more than the other two and get more prizes. The trio having been friends since they were younger and been inseparable ever since, spending all their time together playing games or going to the park. With Irina having also invited Naruto and Izumi to go with her family to church, with the two agreeing to go a few times when they could. Along with sleeping over at each other's houses, something that Irina and Izumi were both happy about when they got to stay with Naruto or he stayed with them. The Uzumaki being unaware that both girls had a crush on him, something they've developed with how kind he was, and always willing to help them no matter what. Plus they couldn't deny that they found his whisker marks adorable and always found an excuse to touch them, much to Naruto's embarrassment. It also lead to Izumi and Irina to butt heads to get his attention, but they didn't let it get in the way of their own friendship. After playing a few more games, the friends went to exchange the prize tickets they'd won, all of them happy at what they had gotten before leaving the arcade. Unknown location though unknown to the trio, in another part of Kuo a battle was taking place, consisting of 12 people with black bat-like wings and 16 wielding swords made of light and guns. With both groups targeting two people, a man wielding his own sword of light and a woman with wings as well. These two were Masaomi Yegaki an exorcist of the church and his lover Claria Belial a devil from the house of Belial and current overseer of Kuo town. A relationship that was supposed to be forbidden due to their respective factions being enemies, despite the ceasefire that they currently had. But that didn't stop them from seeing each other and falling in love, but has now lead them to their current situation. The couple having been out together when they were ambushed by a group of twenty devils, all of them not bothering to hide the fact they were sent to kill them both. Though while they were caught off guard by the sudden attack, Masaomi and Claria were able to recover and take out eight of the devils. With it not being long before the exorcists arrived, including Masaomi's superior Toji Shidu. Initially thinking they were here to help them, Masaomi paid for that when he took a light bullet to the side when they shot at Claria. With this putting them at an even bigger disadvantage, as the devils and exorcists made a temporary alliance seeing as they were after the same thing, but planned to take the other group out afterwards. While Masaomi and Claria were starting to get tired from fighting both groups, along with getting more injuries. Get out of the way and save yourself some pain human. We're just after the traitorous bitch. You can die quickly with the rest of the exorcists once we're done with her. Said one of the devils, only for Masaomi to glare at them, while Claria narrowed her eyes at what the devil said, before they widened as she began realizing what was really going on. They'd go this far to keep their secret, Claria thought not thinking the great king faction would kill other devils if it had meant they could keep the king pieces a secret. Then you'll have to kill me first, Masaomi retorted, refusing to stand aside and let them hurt Claria anymore. Masaomi, stop this foolishness. She is a devil from the house of Belial, something that will only create more conflict. End this now, join your real allies and comrades so we may deal with these devils together. Toji said pleadingly, still trying to convince Masaomi to end things with Claria, so they didn't have to kill him as well. Only for the exorcist to look at him neutrally and not move away from Cleria's side, making the devil smile that he'd still stand with her, despite the likely chance they'll both die. The sight making Toji sigh in sadness and resignation, seeing he couldn't convince Masaomi to not die along with the devils. Though before any of them could make move, a dagger was suddenly thrown in the middle of the group of devils, getting all their attention. With some of their eyes widening when they saw the dagger and recognized it. The devils having no time to react before a man suddenly appeared in a yellow flash carrying two light daggers in each hand before he began cutting the devils down faster than they could dodge or counter. 
only being further shocked when golden chains shot out of the ground, wrapping around each of the exorcists' neck, except for Toji, before tightening it hard enough to snap their necks. While the man had killed the last of the devils, picking up his dagger while a woman jumped down from a roof. The sight of them shocking Toji, Masaomi, and Claria, recognizing them as Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki. Minato being a former exorcist and one renowned as the Yellow Flash, due to his ability to teleport, along with one of the few capable of wielding a holy sword. Having formerly wielded an Excalibur fragment, specifically Excalibur rapidly, granting him enhanced speed and reflexes, only further adding to his title. While Kashina was a magician known for mastery of her unique magical chains, capable of sealing away the abilities of anyone caught by them, along with her fierce temper that made everyone wary of approaching her or hurting anyone she cared about unless they wanted to be on the receiving end of her anger. You know when we moved here, I was really hoping to be done with the supernatural world, but yet it seems we just keep getting dragged into one mess after another. Kashina said in annoyance, before smiling and waving at Claria, having met the devil a few times and consider her a friend. M. Minato, Kashina, what have you done? Toji said in shock and horror as he looked at the bodies of his deceased colleagues, only to grunt in pain when the Uzumaki woman suddenly slammed her fist into his face. I believe that's my wife's way of saying, what have you done Toji? You were going to kill Masaomi and Claria, and for what? Because they choose who they love and want to be with? Because they're from different factions? Said Minato as he looked at Toji with a frown, having never really cared for the church's logic when it came to relationships between exorcists and devils. Fully believing that they should choose who they want to be with, regardless of if the person is human, a devil, an angel, a fallen angel, a yokai, or any other species. Which is just one of the reasons he chose to leave, not liking the restrictions Hay put on their members' lives or forcing them to make choices they didn't want to make. The status quo, Toji said, only for Masaomi to have enough as he grabbed him his collar. Who cares about the damn status quo? Look at yourself Toji, even if you weren't working with them, you were still willing to lie with these devils just to kill me and Claria. What does your precious status quo say about that? Or will you try to justify it with some damn excuse? Maybe bend it around that you were doing the Lord's work? Masaomi demanded angrily that he dare try to claim some moral high ground. But you were working with them, weren't you? Stated Claria, getting the other's attention, before seeing she that was looking right at Toji. You may have not known when they would attack, but you were working with the devils to make sure both of us died. But none of them knew that. Tell me if I'm wrong. Claria said while frowning at the exorcist, with Masaomi, Minato and Kashina narrowing their eyes at Toji, who could only lower his head. I admit it. Yes, I was aware that devils would be sent after the two of you, after both sides failed to split you apart. Zekram Bael and I, we we agreed to a temporary alliance that no one was aware of, that we'd work together to kill you both. As a means to maintain our respective rules and status quo. I knew when the attack would take place and so did Zekram, but everyone else it would simply be an unexpected coincidence. Toji confessed, much to Masaomi's growing anger. A traitor and a hypocrite then. Masaomi shouted raising his sword, wanting nothing more than to kill Toji, before simply tossing him on the ground and went back over to Claria as he hugged her, simply relieved she's still alive. Thank you, both of you. Said Masaomi to Minato and Kashina, knowing he and Claria were indebted to them, with both adults nodding in response before looking back at Toji. Tell me something Toji. What would you have done if Irina learned what you did? Kashina said, making Toji freeze and look at them with wide eyes. Did you even think for one second about that? How this would affect your family? Betraying the rules you claim to be enforcing, how do you think Irina would react? If she became an exorcist, became proud to be just like you, only to learn you helped get Masaomi and Claria killed? That you worked with devils to make it happen? Would you even be able to look at her? Questioned Kashina while glaring at Toji, who shook as he imagined his daughter smiling up at him proud to become an exorcist like her father. Only for the expression turned into one of shock, horror, and disgust that he betrayed his beliefs and murdered his own colleague and subordinate. Just to maintain a status quo that he, himself, would have broken to do so. It doesn't have to be that way, though, you can still try and make things better, starting by simply letting them live in peace. Minato said while motioning to Masaomi and Claria, with the exorcist looked at the couple, really looked and saw how close they were, not seeing anything strange or abnormal they just looked relieved to still be alive. Masaomi you're truly happy with this day with Claria? Toji said, with Masaomi nodding in response. I am. Stated Masaomi, with Claria kissing him on the cheek. We both are. Claria said while smiling at her lover, with Toji standing up before bowing lowly to them. Then all I can ask is for forgiveness. 
said Toji, with Masaomi frowning at his superior and now former friend, not sure if he could ever forgive him. There's nothing to forgive, you were just being used like everyone else here, Claria said while getting everyone's attention. What are you talking about? questioned Minato, wondering what she meant. This wasn't about maintaining the status quo or the rules, maybe for the exorcists it was. But the devils, they only saw an opportunity to kill me. For Zekram, this wasn't about maintaining the status quo, it was eliminating me for what I know. Claria replied, making them all frown at what she could know that warrant death. And what do you know, exactly? Kashina asked since it had to be important if Zekram Bael of all devils would want her dead. That that I unfortunately can't tell you, not out of mistrust, but if it was discovered that you all knew as well, you'd be targeted as well, you and your families, said Claria, knowing she can't share the existence of the king pieces, not if it'd simply make them targets as well. Well whatever it is, if it's important enough that you're marked for death, then both of you need to disappear. Minato stated, with Masaomi and Claria nodding in agreement, knowing it isn't safe in Kuo anymore. I can help with that. As far as anyone will know, I was the only survivor and both of you were executed as instructed. While the bodies had been destroyed beyond recognition, said Toji, wanting to do what he can to make amends. With Masaomi and Claria being surprised at the offer of help, before nodding in thanks, glad that they'll be able to go into hiding and not worry of being hunted down. Time skip two weeks. What do you mean we're leaving? Naruto said, frowning in confusion at his parents. We aren't, but you are Naruto. You'll be going to Kyoto for a while and staying with a friend of mine while there. Said Kashina while smiling at her son, with Minato nodding in agreement, both knowing this would keep Naruto safe for a while. After dealing with the exorcists and devils sent to kill Masaomi and Claria, the two had managed to fake their deaths before going into hiding, not telling anyone where they'd go just to be safe. While Toji had taken his family to England, claiming it was work-related, something that saddened Naruto and Izumi at seeing Irina leave. While both of them had taken full blame for the deaths of the devils and exorcists, as a means to keep them from trying to find Masaomi and Claria in case they didn't believe they were dead, and to take any suspicions off Toji, since he was the only one who walked away, albeit after being injured to help sell the act. Though this also lead both parents to decide to send Naruto away for his own protection, with Kyoto being the safest since the devils wouldn't risk attacking the home of the yokai faction. With it hopefully being temporary until they knew it was safe for him to return or they could join him. But why? And why aren't you coming with me? Questioned Naruto, confused and worried at why his parents were sending him away alone. It's nothing important, your Ka-san and I just have some business to handle, and it's something we don't want you to worry about, so just think of like a small vacation, Minato said, with Naruto looking between them for a few moments. Well will you come once the business is done? Naruto asked, with Kashina smiling and kissing his forehead. We'll be there before you know it, now go get packed and ready, Kashina replied, with the whiskered blonde nodding before going up to his room to pack his stuff. Later after packing his belongings, Naruto was driven to the train station and put on the next train to Kyoto, something that saddened the boy as he didn't get to say goodbye to Izumi. Having wanted to at least tell her he was leaving, but his parents had insisted they get to the station in time. With Naruto now sitting in his seat looking out the window, still confused and worried at his parents' behavior in sending him to Kyoto alone, while they stayed behind for some business, the Uzumaki only hoping that whatever it is doesn't take too long for them to deal with. Only for him to be pulled from his thoughts when something suddenly hit the train, everyone crying out or screaming in shock and fear at the sudden impact, knocking the train off the rails. Even more so when explosions started going off around them, with the train blowing up much to their horror. Naruto only being further shocked and scared when he was suddenly grabbed and pulled through the broken window. The Uzumaki crying out when he was then suddenly thrown across the ground, looking up only to see someone with black bat-like wings standing over with more flying in the air and blasting the train until the entire thing was destroyed and everyone was dead. This is the brat we were sent to deal with, what a waste, said the devil while scoffing before kicking Naruto in the ribs, making him grunt in pain as he hit the ground again. Hey, leave some for the rest of us, another devil said as the remaining four landed around Naruto, before the one who spoke stomped on his back. Yeah, we couldn't even have fun with that red-headed bitch earlier, damn orders, said another devil annoyed that they were explicitly ordered to kill both humans and not waste any time. While Naruto froze at what they just said, hearing they went after someone with red hair, making him look up and glare at the devils. Who are you talking about? demanded Naruto, angry, worried, and scared that they could be talking about his mother, given the fact they're apparently targeting him as well. Only to cry out when he was kicked across the face, feeling his nose was broken and blood gushing out of it, making the devils laugh. Ooh, looks like we have a tough guy. 
one of the devils laughed before picking Naruto up by his leg then immediately slamming him down on the ground. You wanna know who we're talking about, you little shit? The hot ass redhead we just killed, along with that blonde dumbass. Too bad too, we could have shown her what it was like to be with real men. Taunted a devil before stomping on Naruto's chest, making him cough and gag, though still shook at what they just said. K ka san TT2 san they they killed them. Naruto thought, shaking upon hearing that they killed his parents, before grunting in pain when he was thrown against one of the railway's support pillars. But you know how it goes, orders are orders, and we didn't feel like having the great king faction on our asses for fucking up a job. But that doesn't mean we can't take our time killing a stupid kid, like you. Said the devil, grinning cruelly before punching Naruto in the face before throwing him back on the ground where they began punching and kicking the Uzumaki repeatedly. They they killed them someone sent them to kill Ka-san and Tu-san someone had my parents killed? Thought Naruto, not even registering the attack anymore, feeling his entire body was numb at what he just heard, that his parents were killed, ordered by someone. Though soon the numbness started turning into anger and rage, that someone would kill his parents for no reason and then send these bastards after him. Hearing them laugh about murdering his parents, that they're annoyed they couldn't defile his mother, and now simply enjoying beating him up. I, Naruto muttered while feeling his body shaking, along with starting to feel warmer all of a sudden, before one of the devils grabbed him by his hair and lifted his head up. Ah oh, sorry, what was that runt? Couldn't quite hear you from kissing the ground. The devil taunted before slamming Naruto's head back down, getting another round of laughter from the assassins. Only for their laughter to immediately end when Naruto grabbed the wrist of the devil holding his head, shocked when he suddenly screamed in agony. Even more so as jet black flames erupted from where Naruto was holding him. I, said Naruto while lifting his head up, the devils unconsciously stepping back at seeing his slit pupils glaring at them murderously and more of the black fire flickering off his body. I will kill you. Naruto shouted as jet black flames suddenly exploded off his body, the devils being shocked and taken off guard by what just happened, leaving them with no time to escape as fire hit them. The devils crying out in pain and agony as they felt the flames weren't just burning their bodies, it felt like their very souls were being burned. While their attempts to try and put the flames out were useless, as their magic and power didn't seem to do anything. With it not being long before the devils couldn't handle the pain anymore and dropped to the ground dead, with their bodies still burning. Naruto, meanwhile, panted as he stood up on shaky legs while glaring at the bodies of the devils, wishing they could have suffered longer. Good riddance. Naruto said darkly, not caring he just killed five people, only that they paid for killing his parents. You're a strange one, aren't you? Someone stated in a bored and emotionless tone, making Naruto tense and quickly turn around to see who spoke, only to be surprised at who he saw. It was a cute, young girl with long black hair down to her hips and gray eyes. Her ears differ from a normal human's as they have pointed tips, although her long black hair makes this feature difficult to notice. Her dark gray eyes have reptilian slitted pupils. Her attire consisted of a black gothic lolita outfit which exposed her breasts with X-shaped tape covering her nipples. While her expression was entirely void of emotion, only looking bored despite the destruction around her. Who who are you? Naruto demanded warily, not sure who this girl was, only for her to ignore him and instead look at the still burning black flames. Come. The girl hummed in thought before looking at Naruto, walking up to him and get uncomfortably close to the Uzumaki. What are you doing? Who are you? And where did you come from? Said Naruto while backing away from the girl, only to find her hands on his shoulders, holding him in place. You're very noisy, be quiet. Said the girl, making Naruto tense as while he still didn't hear any emotions in her voice, he felt that she was starting to get annoyed. Yes, you have one of Vritra's sacred gears inside of you, the blaze black flare, also known as the evil dragon's black flame. The girl said, which further confused the whiskered blonde. What are you talking about? Who's Vritra and what's a sacred gear? Naruto asked, not knowing what was even happening anymore. Vritra is one of the dragon kings and an evil dragons, known as the prison dragon, the enveloper and darkness dragon king. He's slightly less annoying than the rest of my kind since he knows not to get involved unless it concerns him directly. Said the girl, with Naruto looking at her in shock. Wh what? D dragons are real. Why you're a dragon? Naruto said, only to flinch when the girl narrowed her eyes at him. Hum yes, dragons are real and I am one. I am Ophis, the Ouroboros dragon and the infinite dragon god. And you you are interesting to me. Said Ophis while pointing at Naruto, knowing that Vritra's sacred gears would be useful to have in getting rid of Great Red and taking back her home. I am? Naruto asked warily, still not sure what to make of this girl. Yes, you are. And I want you to join me now. Ophis stated, which only further shocked Naruto. 
join you. You literally just show up out of nowhere, talk about dragons and things called sacred gears, then suddenly expect me to join you. Naruto demanded, not sure if she's crazy or just didn't care. Yes. Ophis replied like it was obvious, the Uzumaki only able to look at her with wide eyes before shaking his head and looking at her with narrowed eyes. Why would I join you at all? All I know is your name. What would you even give me in return for joining you? Questioned Naruto, not sure if he wanted to trust her or join her for whatever reason she wanted him. What if I could help you gather the rest of Ritra's sacred gears? As right now you only have one, while the others are still out there for you to collect. Each with a powerful ability for you to access, that's only made stronger when used together. In addition to that, I shall also grant you one wish. Said Ophis, with Naruto being surprised at the offer before freezing at the second part. Can you bring back the dead? Naruto asked, since the only thing he really wanted was his parents back, only for that hope to be dashed when Ophis shook her head. Unfortunately, that's beyond even my power since it's unlikely that those devils left their bodies intact. Ophis replied, doubting the devils would have left the bodies in good enough condition to be revived, making Naruto clench his fists that he couldn't bring his parents back. Then everyone who was involved in their deaths, everyone who's part of this great king faction, I want them all dead. Said Naruto since if he couldn't have his parents back, he can at least make sure everyone involved in their deaths dies as well. Very well, I'll see to it they meet their ends said Ophis before holding out her hand to Naruto, who looked at it before taking the ravenette's hand. Not a moment later, both Naruto and Ophis vanished as if they were never there. Time skipped ten years, hard to believe I'm back here, and it looks like nothing's changed. Naruto thought while walking through Kuo, seeing that nothing much has changed with his former home, though now he was aware of what happened when no one was watching and the lights went out. Nine years have passed since the day he lost his parents and awakened his sacred gear, then being found and recruited by Ophis into the Chaos Brigade, along with, surprisingly, Ophis taking him in as her adoptive son, which was at first just a cover used to keep most of the Chaos Brigade from trying to use him for their own purposes. And as Ophis put it, it was only natural since they were both black dragons, so it made sense, to her anyway, that they'd be mother and son. Along with having the more trustworthy members of the Chaos Brigade help raise and train Naruto, learning everything about the supernatural world including the fact that his father was a former exorcist and his mother was a magician, both being rather well known before retiring. Ophis also kept good on her end of their agreement, with Naruto having gained the other three of Ritra's sacred gears, the absorption line, the delete field, and the shadow prison. With all of them together also reforming Ritra's spirit within him, allowing Naruto to meet the Dragon King, who was rather polite and wise despite being considered an evil dragon, and the Uzumaki was grateful to have Ritra as his partner and helping him out when he needed it. Even better when she fulfilled my wish, thought Naruto smirking darkly, having relished it when Ophis sent him and a few other members of the Chaos Brigade to massacre the majority of the Great King faction. Everyone involved in his parents' murder, with Naruto personally killing Zekrom Bael while making sure he suffered for what he did. All while taking away the last thing he had before landing the final blow, his power. Having used Absorption Line to transfer all of Zekrom's power straight into an object, taking all of it until he had none left to take, including his power of destruction. With Naruto then burning him alive with blaze black flare, happy at avenging his parents along with his loyalty to Ophis being solidified. And while Naruto would never forget his parents, he had begun starting to see Ophis as a mother, since she did seem to care for him in her own way. At least when she's acting like a parent, Naruto thought, knowing that Ophis could be rather naive about certain things, including the difference between familial love and romantic love having ended up waking up with her in bed with him more than a few times. After he'd finished his training, Naruto had asked to return to Kuo, something that Ophis allowed. But only if he had someone accompany him to watch and guard him, something he protested against since he could handle himself just fine, which Ophis didn't deny, but did remind him there are still beings far stronger than him. Which Naruto would accept, knowing it was true, leading to him being accompanied by Kuroka to Kuo. With her currently being in her cat form and resting on his shoulder, looking around in interest at the town. And Naruto, said a familiar and shaky voice, pulling Naruto from his thoughts as he looked, only for his eyes to widen when he saw it was Izumi. Seeing she had grown into a beautiful young woman and had a voluptuous figure, with her hair now going down to her hips, and her attire consisting of a white long sleeved, button down shirt with vertical linings, a black ribbon on the collar, a black shoulder cape and matching button down corset a magenta skirt with white accents, thigh-high black socks, and brown Mary Janes. Izumi, Naruto said in surprise at seeing her, before smiling at the brunette, happy to see his friend again. Before grunting when Izumi launched herself at him, wrapping her arms around him tightly before Naruto heard her start crying into his chest. 
Naruto, you're alive. I heard wh what happened to dear parents and I th thought th that yo 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 you d d d died tt too. Izumi cried, overjoyed and relieved to see he's still alive, with Naruto wincing at hearing this, now feeling like a dick at not doing something to contact her or Irina sooner. I'm sorry Izumi, I didn't mean to hurt you like that. But I had been attacked by the same people who killed my parents, it was only thanks to someone arriving and saving me that I'm still alive. So I went with them, since they offered to help me and so I could learn to protect myself as well as those I care about, including you. Naruto said, looking at Izumi and wiping the tears away before hugging her. I'm sorry you had to go through that, but I promise I'm not going anywhere again, said Naruto, not wanting to hurt his friend again, with Izumi sniffling and nodded. You better, said Izumi, happy to have him back before she took notice of Kuroka resting on Naruto's shoulder, who was looking at her curiously, making the brunette smile and pet her. Oh, and who's this cutie? Izumi asked, with Naruto smiling at Kuroka purred from Izumi's petting. This is Karara, I met her during my travels and adopted her after seeing she had nowhere to go. I actually just arrived back in Kuo now and plan to enroll into Kuo Academy once I get settled in, said Naruto, making Izumi smile joyfully upon hearing this. Really, that's great, since Kuo Academy was the school I got to, if you're enrolling, I can show you around if we're in the same homeroom, Izumi said excitedly at having her friend attending Kuo with her. Huh, that's great and hopefully we're in the same homeroom, since it'd be nice having a friend around. Naruto stated before they began walking around Kuo and reconnecting. With Izumi taking the chance to look her friend over and see how much he's changed. Seeing that he still had the same spiky blonde hair, his skin looked to be a little paler, and his eyes were a darker purple color as well. While his attire consisted of black boots, black pants with purple lining on the sides tucked into them, a dark purple shirt, and a dark gray jacket with purple edging. Naruto's gotten really handsome, thought Izumi while blushing at her friend's looks, before smiling lewdly at remembering how hard his arms and chest felt when she hugged him. I wonder what other parts of him are that hard, I can't wait to make him into a harem king. Izumi thought as her blush grew more intense, along with the images appearing in her mind. So what have you been doing? Naruto asked while looking at Izumi, who quickly shoved the images to the back of her mind, for now anyway. Nothing much, though I did join the kendo team after entering Kuo Academy and met two other girls there, Marayama and Kates. They're really great and some of the best members of the team. I also joined the archery club and wrestling club to widen my overall arsenal fighting style, replied Izumi, smiling as she thought of her other friends. Then I can't wait to meet them, and I've actually learned how to use a sword as well, if you want, we could spar later when I'm enrolled in the academy, offered Naruto since Ophis had also given him a very special sword as well in addition to Vritra's sacred gears. Yeah, that'd be really great, but what about you, what have you done over the years? Questioned Izumi, curious about what Naruto's been doing. A little bit of everything, I've traveled a lot and been to practically every country, meeting a lot of interesting people. Some good, some bad, and ones that's I simply I didn't like. Naruto said, having met members of plenty of different factions and pantheons, some he could call friends and others as enemies. That's cool and lucky, getting to see so many new places, Izumi said while smiling at the whiskered blonde, who nodded in agreement. It was pretty great. Maybe when we're able to, I can show you some of the places I've been to and introduce you to some of the friends I made along the way, Naruto said, making the brunette's smile widen. I'd really like that, Izumi replied, wanting to know more about what Naruto's been up to, along with seeing if there's any girls she could recruit into the harem that she plans to make for him. Naruto kun. I hate to interrupt, but you should know that your friend is in possession of a sacred gear. A powerful one from what I'm sensing, Kuroka said via telepathy, having sensed something coming from Izumi and could confirm she had a sacred gear. She's right, partner, I sense it as well. Whatever gear the girls has, it's powerful and draconian in origin. Added Vritra, sensing the sacred gear that Izumi has is of draconian origin, only being unable to pinpoint what dragon it could originate from. With this worrying Naruto, since not only did Izumi have a sacred gear, but that it was a dragon type sacred gear was even more worrying. Given that dragon type sacred gears are some of the most powerful ones, even the common and weaker ones like twice critical can be powerful and dangerous in the hands of the right wielder. And depending on how powerful the sacred gear is, it could also cause Izumi to go into a berserker rage and have to be put down before she could kill anyone. That's not even counting the target it had put on her back by those who'd want to recruit her or kill her. Both thoughts making Naruto clench his fists, refusing to let anything happen to Izumi. I won't lose anyone else I care about, never again, thought Naruto before taking Azumi's hand in his own, making her look at him in confusion. Sorry I just really missed you Azumi, Naruto said, 
making Izumi smile and blush lightly while squeezing his hand gently. I missed you too, Naruto, replied Izumi as they continued walking and reconnecting with each other. Later once it started getting late, Naruto walked Izumi home, where they traded farewells before Naruto headed home as well. Though once he was far enough away from Izumi's home, the Uzumaki stopped in his tracks. You gonna keep hiding or will you come out now? Naruto said to seemingly no one, before turning around to see his followers step out of their hiding spot. With it being a petite girl with white hair and gold eyes. The front of her hair has two long bangs going past her shoulders and several loose bangs hanging over her forehead, while the back has a short bob cut. She also wears a black cat-shaped hair clip on both sides of her hair. With her wearing the same uniform Izumi was wearing, minus the shoulder cape. Who are you? Naruto asked warily, with the girl being just as wary, with neither of them lowering their guard. Kaniko Taju, Rook of Rias Grammary, replied Kaniko after a few moments. Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto introduced before they fell silent again, measuring each other up. What is your relationship with Izumi Senpei? Kaniko asked, only to see Naruto tense and narrow his eyes at her. What does your king want with Izumi? demanded Naruto, now suspicious and protective if devils were watching Izumi, with Kaniko tensing at the chance of having to fight Naruto. Though when she saw the black flames start gathering in his hands, the Nekosho relented, knowing how bad it'd be for her and the rest of Rias's peerage to get into a confrontation with Naruto. All of them having heard about his reputation as a mercenary bounty hunter in the supernatural community. Even if he's just a human, he's not someone that wanted to have after them. Bucko wishes to recruit Senpei into her peerage. I was asked to observe her until then. Kaniko revealed, only to see Naruto didn't lower his guard or extinguish his flames. Then why didn't she just ask Izumi like a normal person, instead of having you watch her? Naruto said, knowing the extent that devils would go, to recruit new peerage members and how poorly devils can treat those in their peerages. There was a reason there is a growing number of stray devils, some would simply choose being on the run than being used and abused by cruel masters. Even after the underworld fell under the full control of the four Mao after the majority of the Great King faction was wiped out, since they were still just four devils despite their power and reputation, and against a majority of noble elitists that were afraid of losing their power, it would only result in another civil war among the devils. Something that they desperately wanted to prevent. Do you not trust devils? Or just not want your friend to be one? Questioned Kaniko warily, given how Naruto was a bit of a controversial figure among the devils especially for the Gremory family and Bael family, with his hand in the Great King faction's destruction while having brutally killed Zekrom, himself. No, it's not that I don't trust devils, I have some friends who are devils despite my shaky relationship with the faction, overall. With them consisting of both naturally born devils or reincarnated as ones. If Izumi becomes one, I'll respect her choice and still care about her no matter what. Especially if it helps her in manifesting and learning to control her sacred gear. Naruto replied, shocking Kaniko that he already knew about Azumi's sacred gear. But she's my friend, one of my closest and oldest friends in fact, so I simply want to make sure the devil who recruits her treats her right. And given the fact that your king is having you spy on her, that makes me think I can't trust her to look after or treat Azumi right. The only reason I'm even hearing you out now, is I know the Gremory family have a reputation of treating their servants and peerage members kindly, even if they're one of the devil families I have the worst relationship with. Added Naruto, making Kaniko frown at his words. Bucko has no negative intentions towards Izumi Senpei, and she is kind to all her peerage members. Kaniko stated in Rias's defense, with Naruto not looking convinced but extinguished his flames. I'll be the judge of that. Set up a meeting between me and your king, and I'll see if she only has kind intentions towards Izumi. Said Naruto, wanting to meet Rias himself to determine her intentions, with the Nekosho nodding in response. Very well, I'll inform Bucko that you want to meet her. We're based in Kuo Academy as the occult research club and our base is the old school building. One other thing, Buckhau's friend Sona Cedri is also based here in Kuo with her peerage being the student council. Said Kaniko, informing him of Sona and her peerage to avoid any misunderstandings, with the whiskered blonde nodding in response. That works for me, I plan to enroll into Kuo Academy anyway. I'll meet with your king then. But let me make this perfectly clear, if anything happens to Izumi, anything that you or the rest of your king's peerage could have prevented, I'll hold you all responsible. Naruto threatened with his flames flaring up slightly, making Kaniko gulp before nodding. Of course, I'll go inform Bucko now, and I promise, we'd never let anything happen to Izumi Senpei or anyone else in Kuo. Kaniko said before teleporting away. I'll hold you to that, muttered Naruto before pulling out a fallen angel feather, having grabbed it while he and Izumi were walking, 
seeing that Rias and Sona were either incompetent and not knowing fallen angels were here or they knew but weren't doing anything about it, neither of which looked good for them at the moment. Sorry for being too hard on your sister like that, Kuroka. Naruto said while petting Kuroka, who nuzzled against his hand, having been suppressing her power to avoid being detected by Kaneko. It's fine Naruto-kun, you're just looking out for your friend, but please don't be too hard on Shion-chan, if you and the devils here end up fighting each other. Replied Kuroka, not wanting her sister to get hurt too badly. I'll try, but it'll depend on Kaneko, said Naruto since he didn't want to hurt his friends, physically or emotionally, he also won't hold back against those that threaten them. Kuroka could only sigh, but nodded in understanding before Naruto began walking home. While high up in the sky, the two were being watched by a fallen angel. She was an attractive young woman with violet eyes having a slender body. She had long silky black hair down to her hips and possessed two black feathered wings. With her clothing consisting of black, strap-like objects, that resembled leather, around and under her large breasts, a thong-like piece held around her hips by three thin straps, gloves that ran right up her arms with small lengths of chains hanging from them, shoulder guard-like objects on her shoulders with three large spikes sprouting from her right shoulder, and black thigh-high heel boots. This was Reynare, a member of Grigori and known for her loyalty to Azazel and Shemazai to the point of worship and fanaticism. What's he doing here? thought Reynare, looking at Naruto in shock at seeing him in Kuo. Having encountered him a few times, during the rare times that Azazel met and negotiated with Ophis, usually about the sacred gears now residing within the Uzumaki. With the two being acquaintances at most, with Reynare knowing that he definitely isn't someone you wanted to cross. And the fact that he's also apparently friends with her target just made this a lot more difficult. Shaking her head, the Ravenette flew back to the abandoned church so they can figure out what to do with this recent development. I might need to contact Lord Azazel and tell him that the mission is a no-go. Reynare thought hating the idea of failing one of the people she idolized the most, but didn't seem to have much of a choice. Today's the day, Izumi thought, smiling in excitement while practically bouncing in her seat in her homeroom class. The reason for her excitement being that after four days since her reunion with Naruto, her childhood friend crush has finally gotten settled back into Kuo. With Naruto having told her yesterday he had enrolled into Kuo Academy and would be starting today. Much to Izumi's happiness that she'll be able to see more of her childhood friend crush, having stayed up all night praying and buying sutras, hoping they'll be in the same homeroom. Are you alright Izumi? asked a girl that's sitting right behind Izumi. Yeah, you're acting even more excited than usual. Did something happen? A second girl who's sitting next to the first asked, with Izumi looking behind her at the girls. The first girl had long brown hair with fair skin, two long strands on either side of her face and tied into two twintails with red ribbons and goldish brown eyes. The second girl had fair skin, shoulder-length salmon pink hair held back by a white headband, and brownish red eyes. There was also a third girl with fair skin as well, mess light brown hair tied into braids on each side of her head, and gold eyes that were covered by pink rimmed glasses. With all three of the girls wearing the Kuo Academy girls uniform, with the third girl not wearing the shoulder cape. These were Murayama, Kates, and Aika Kiryu, three of Izumi's friends with Murayama and Kates also being on the kendo team with her. Sorry, I'm just really excited since a few days ago a childhood friend of mine returned to Kuo, after he was gone for nearly a decade. And I just learned last night he's enrolling into Kuo, so I'm really excited and hoping he's in our homeroom. Izumi said while smiling brightly, surprising the girls at hearing this before smiling at their friend, happy for her. Wow, that's really great. I can't wait to meet him, Kates said, with Murayama nodding in agreement. Yeah, I just hope he's a nice guy, we could use more of them here, said Murayama, sighing in annoyance given how most of the guys at Kuo Academy only enrolled due to it formerly being an all-girls school. Don't worry, Naruto's a really great guy and I'm sure you'll like him. He even learned how to use a sword while he was away and offered to spar with me, replied Izumi, with Aika's smile turning lewd for a moment. That's good to hear. Unless you're disappointed he won't try peeking on you Izumi. Aika said, causing Izumi to blush before she began giggling pervertedly at imagining Naruto peeking on her. Ooh. What if I made a peephole just for Naruto to use, I wouldn't mind letting him see me undress. Then can let him throw me down and ravage me, Izumi thought, imagining Naruto having his way with her while she begs for more. Your mask is slipping Izumi. Murayama and Kates said with deadpan expressions, fully aware of Izumi's perverted nature, having gotten used to it during their time on the kendo team and how she'd shamelessly watch them undress or shower after practice. Ooh, were you thinking of you and Naruto together Izumi? What were you doing? How big do you think he is? questioned Aika while smiling eagerly at her friend, with Izumi blushing and furiously shaking her head to stave off the perverted thoughts. 
Shush shut shut up. And and don't say anything to Naruto either, I don't want him finding out, Izumi said frantically, not wanting Naruto to think she's only a pervert that just wants to have sex with him or that she's a creep who'd try peeking on him. Aika's smile merely grew at this, knowing she'll be able to have a lot of fun with that. A thought Murayama and Kates shared, liking the chance to tease their friend. Luckily for Izumi, their teacher Aruka Amino, soon arrived at the classroom. All right, settle down everyone, settle down, Aruka said, getting everyone's attention on him with Aruka waiting until he had all the students' attention. Now before we begin today's lesson, I have an announcement, we'll be having a new student is joining us today and I hope you all give him a warm welcome here at Kuo Academy, said Aruka, with the entire class perking up at the mention of a new student, only the guys to be disappointed it wasn't a new girl, while the girls were curious about getting a new student. While Izumi's happiness grew before she began mentally cheering and dancing when Naruto walked in, happy that her friend crush was in her homeroom. Hello everyone, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, it's nice to meet you all and hope you treat me kindly. Naruto greeted with a smile and a bow, getting different reactions from the class, with some of the girls looking at him with hearts in their eyes while the guys glared at him. We just got another prince, look at those cute whisker marks. He's so handsome, damn it, now we have another pretty boy bastard to deal with. Him and Yuto won't leave any girls for the rest of us. All right, quiet down everyone, Aruka said loudly, silencing the class before he looked at Naruto. We're glad to have you joining our class Naruto, please take the seat next to Izumi over there. Said Aruka, with the Uzumaki nodding before he went and sat beside Izumi, smiling at his friend who returned it. Yes, Naruto's not only my homeroom, but he's sitting next to me, Izumi thought joyfully that she had her childhood friend this close to her. You look happy Izumi. Did something good happen? Naruto asked in amusement, chuckling slightly when she punched him lightly on the shoulder. Don't act like you don't know, though I'm really happy that we'll be seeing a lot more of each other now. Replied Izumi, with the whiskered blonde nodding in agreement. Yeah, it's nice to have a familiar face who can help show me around. This place is definitely a lot bigger than I was expecting. Said Naruto, having heard Kuo Academy had a primary division a high school division, and a college division, but it's much larger than he expected. I know, it can take a while to get used to it and find your way around, but it's really great and there are plenty of different clubs to join as well. Izumi said, having been surprised herself by Kuo when she first enrolled. By the way Naruto, I've been wondering, where exactly are you staying? Questioned Izumi, wondering where Naruto was staying since she hadn't seen his home, given she doubted he'd stay in his family's old home after what happened. I got a place just outside of town in the forest. I can show it to you later if you want. Naruto replied, having gotten the place specifically so he could have some privacy to train and in the event he was attacked by anyone who manages to get past the defenses, it will let him deal with any enemies without worry. That'd be really great. Izumi while smiling at the chance to see where Naruto is staying before they both looked ahead when the lecture started. Though unseen to them, Aika passed both Murayama and Kate's notes, with both girls blushing brightly at what they were before quickly hiding them. Though the two gave a few quick glances at Naruto before looking away with red faces, making Aika mentally giggle at messing with her friends. Later after class ended and break started, Izumi had begun showing Naruto around Kuo Academy along with introducing him to Murayama, Kates, and Aika. So, you two are in the kendo club with Izumi? Are you part of any other clubs? Naruto asked while looking at Murayama and Kates. Yep and we're some of the best members, along with Izumi. We make sure to practice every day and improve ourselves. Kates said with a proud smile on her face, with Murayama nodding in agreement. That's right. Though we aren't part of any other clubs like Izumi is, but we have considered the archery club after watching Izumi practice a couple times and it looks pretty fun. Said Murayama as they both considered joining Izumi in practicing archery. That's pretty cool and it's always good to broaden your horizons and try new things. What about you Aika, are you part of any clubs? Questioned Naruto while looking at the spectacle wearing girl, who shook her head. Nope. I'm not really interested in any clubs, but it certainly is fun watching Izumi handle a sword. Aika said grinning at Izumi, who blushed at the words and the double meaning behind them. Yeah, Izumi really knows what she's doing and the right grip to have in handling one. Murayama added, smirking slightly at the brunette as her blush deepened while she tried holding off her perverted imagination. In fact, she was really eager to show you how great she is at using a sword, said Kates, enjoying the sight of Izumi struggling to maintain her composure. Yeah, she mentioned that when she first met up, and I am eager to see what you can do Izumi. I'm sure you've got some great moves and we could even trade some ideas. Naruto said while smiling at his friend, with Izumi unable to hold back a perverted giggle. 
I have so many ideas for using your sword, muttered Izumi, unable to help herself, only to immediately fall silent when Naruto looked at her. What? Naruto asked, not hearing her clearly. Nothing, I was just talking about ideas for using your sword, depending on what kind it was. Izumi said quickly while thinking of an excuse, with Naruto raising a brow at her behavior. Uh sure, though it's kind of unique, said Naruto, knowing his blade wasn't like any other kind. Oh don't worry, I'm sure Izumi will still be more than happy to see it and help you with it, stated Aiko with a perverted grin as Izumi's face turned bright red with blood starting to drip from her nose. So Naruto, Izumi told us you've been gone for a decade, what have you been doing all that time? Kates asked deciding to have mercy on Izumi and change the subject. Mostly traveling, training, meeting different people, and seeing a lot of new and exotic places, but it does feel good to finally stay in one place now, less worrying about suddenly deciding to leave and going somewhere else. Replied Naruto, glad for the chance to relax and stay in one place, even better that it lets him see his friend again. That sounds really nice, getting to travel across the world like that, but what kind of people have you met? Questioned Murayama, with Naruto smirking slightly. It'd be easier asking the kind I haven't met yet, since I've met every kind of person you could imagine. Naruto said, much to their surprise, but it only made them more curious to learn more about his journeys. Though before they could ask anything else, the girls were surprised when Kaneko suddenly walked up to them, not expecting the school's mascot to approach them. Bucko will see you now, Kaneko said while looking at Naruto, only surprising the girls more that she's talking to Naruto and that Rias apparently wants to meet him along with being confused at the serious expression now on his face. Good. Izumi, would you come with me for this? Naruto asked while looking at his friend, wanting her to come since this also involved her, which only confused Izumi further. I guess so. Would that be alright? said Izumi, looking at Kaneko since she seemed to only be bringing Naruto, with the white-haired girl not doing anything to stop him, knowing what he's doing. Yes. Now let's go, Bucko is waiting, replied Kaneko before motioning them to follow her leaving a confused Murayama, Kates and Aika behind, while an equally confused Izumi followed Naruto and Kaneko. What just happened? Kates asked in confusion. I'm not really sure, replied Murayama just as confused, while Aika shook her head as well. The three trading looks with each other before looking back towards Naruto and Izumi following after Kaneko. Naruto, what exactly is going on? How do you know Kaneko? And why does Rias want to see you? questioned Izumi confused at how Naruto apparently knows Kaneko, given he didn't look confused at her appearance, even more so that one of the two great ladies wants to see him. I'll explain everything Izumi, but not yet. Once we get to their clubhouse, I'll tell you anything you want to know. Naruto said while assuring his friend she'll get her answers. With Izumi only being able to nod slowly as that response only confused her even more, wondering what else there was to know. The three walked in silence as they exited the school and headed for the occult research clubhouse, before entering to find Rias inside. Along with who Izumi recognized as Yuto Kiba, the prince of Kuo Academy, and Akeno Himejima, the other half of the two great ladies, standing on either side of Rias. Rias is a beautiful young woman with a voluptuous body, white skin, blue-green eyes, and possessing a buxom figure. Her most distinctive feature is her long, beautiful crimson hair that reaches down to her thighs with an ahoge sticking out from the top. Her hair also has loose bangs covering her forehead and side bangs framing her face. Akeno is an equally beautiful young woman with a voluptuous figure, very long black hair, and violet eyes. Her hair is usually tied in a long ponytail, reaching all the way down to her legs with two strands sticking out from the top and sloping backward, with an orange ribbon keeping it in place. While Yuto is a handsome young man with short blonde hair, bluish gray eyes, and a mole underneath his left eye. With all three wearing the Kuo Academy uniforms, but what surprised Izumi is the unusual serious expressions on their faces. Naruto Uzumaki, how nice of you to join us, Rias said tersely, shocking Izumi even further since this was a far cry from how Rias usually acted. Did I really have a choice? said Naruto while looking at her with a raised brow, knowing that if he didn't meet her or Sona, they'd assume he's a threat and act accordingly. But I am thankful you were at least willing to hear me out, despite the circumstances, Naruto added. Knowing with what happened Rias could have simply had her peerage attack him, showing that she's mature enough to act civilly while earning her a few points. I thought it better to speak before going to less kind methods, stated Rias before looking at Izumi then at Naruto with a raised brow at her presence. I invited Izumi to join since this concerns her as well. Is that fine with you? questioned Naruto, with the redhead looking at him with narrowed eyes. Very well. Izumi may join, Rias said after relenting to this knowing it had only served to antagonize both of them if she removed Izumi. 
Okay. Can someone tell me what's going on? Naruto. Have you met Rias before? Is that why she's trying to incinerate you with her eyes? Izumi asked, wanting to just get some answers before she goes crazy. Not personally, no, but we know of each other, and it wouldn't surprising if she did since I ran afoul of her maternal family a while back, and safe to say, they don't really like me very much. Replied Naruto, much to Izumi's shock at hearing this. That's putting it mildly. Yuto muttered, knowing that's a light way to put the Bael clan's feelings towards Naruto. Later after things calmed down a little, Naruto and Izumi sat down across from Rias, Kaneko and Yuto, while Ikeno came out with a tray of tea. The Ravenette passing it out to everyone with a smile on her face, which grew tense as she held a cup towards Naruto. The whiskered blonde looking at it warily, not sure if he should risk it. Era era, you really think I'd try something as boring as poisoning you? That wouldn't be any funny, since it would be too quick and painless for my tastes, unless it was a paralytic poison. Leaving you helpless for me to do so many things to you, while I can still listen to your sweet screams before the end. Said Akano with a light blush on her face as her sadism leaked out, only backing away when Rias shot her a look while Izumi was shocked at what she just said. Definitely Suzaku's cousin, thought Naruto, knowing while Suzaku was a king hearted and care about the well being of her family, Akano included, she had her own share of sadism for those that crossed her. Can someone just tell me what the hell is going on? Izumi demanded getting tired of not getting answers and getting close to freaking out at the back and forth. Izumi, there's a lot you need to hear, Naruto said, getting his friend's attention, only for the brunette's eyes to widen at seeing Naruto was holding black flames in his hand while not showing a hint of pain or uncomfortableness. Okay, I'm being extremely calm right now despite the fact you're apparently a firebender. Please start talking before I start freaking the fuck out, said Izumi, starting off calmly before screaming at the end making Naruto chuckle lightly as he extinguished the flames. Right, sorry, and that wasn't normal fire, it's created from my sacred gear the blaze black flare. As for what sacred gears are, they're items with powerful abilities created by the god of the bible and given to humans, mostly as a means to help them stand a better chance against the supernatural factions and pantheons, Naruto said before he began telling Izumi about all the different factions and pantheons, along with everything she saw thought was fake or made up was in fact very real. With the brunette listening in stunned silence as her friend told her everything about the supernatural world. Unable to doubt him, even if he hadn't shown her the flames, knowing Naruto wouldn't lie to her about something like this. And the fact that none of the occult research club members looked surprised or phased, meaning they must have already known. Wait, wait, wait. Your parents were an exorcist and magician? Izumi asked after Naruto told her the truth about his parents. Former exorcist actually, Tu San left the church since he didn't agree with a lot of their beliefs and rules. With them having met and settled down together when they had me, replied Naruto, making the brunette nod before she looked at him warily. Is is that the reason they died? They were they were attacked, weren't they? said Izumi, with the Uzumaki nodding while clenching his fists. Yes, they were attacked and murdered by assassins after they got involved and stopped some innocent people from being killed. Then they came after me, their client wanting me dead as well, believing my parents knew something they shouldn't have and wanted to ensure they couldn't tell anyone, including me. And I would have died too, if it wasn't for me awakening my sacred gear after they were dumb enough to mock my parents, even reveal their disappointment they didn't get the chance to rape my Kasan. I enjoyed watching them burn. Naruto said darkly, with Izumi looking at him in shock and sympathy, with even the orc members being shocked at hearing this, while Rias had a sinking feeling at just who the assassin's client was. That's why you left, isn't it? Because you were being targeted by someone or you were trying to avenge your parents? Izumi stated, with Naruto nodding again. Yes, the person who found me, they were the ones who told me about the supernatural world and trained me. I joined them in exchange for two things, the first being the rest of my sacred gears, as the blaze black flare was part of a set which I now have. Said Naruto while glancing at Rias and her peerage, the reveal being a silent warning to them to know he had more than one sacred gear. And the other thing? Izumi asked, with Naruto fully turning to face Rias. The deaths of everyone involved in my parents' murder. And they kept their word. Once I was strong enough by sending me and a few others went to the underworld, where we slaughtered the majority great king faction while only sparing Lord Belial since he had nothing to do with my parents' death or the attempted assassination on the people prior to us. While I personally killed Zekram Bael, the man who ordered theirs and my own death, Naruto revealed, with the redhead looking at him with wide eyes at hearing just why he killed Zekram, that he was simply getting revenge for his parents' death. I didn't know he did that said Rias as she and the rest of the underworld simply believed it was just an attack against them. Of course you didn't, why would devils ever believe they are responsible for any misfortune that befalls them? 
You see me and my allies destroy a major part of you government's hierarchy and simply see us as attackers, not even caring to know the reason, only believing we're the ones in the wrong. And it's not the first time the devils have taken things at face value, choosing to only see what you want rather than what's underneath, all while simply labeling the person as evil and a threat for killing. Innocent. Devils. Said Naruto, given the same thing happened with Kuroka, how she killed her former king to save her sister, only to be labeled as a stray devil. All while her sister was imprisoned and sentenced to death, only being saved by Sirzex and given to Rias to join her peerage, all while believing Kuroka abandoned her. Rias couldn't help but frown at his words, given he basically called devils naive or uncaring, but also felt that there was more to them than just what happened to him. Regardless, even if you're telling the truth, I can't just take your words at face value either. As no matter the reason, you and your allies did attack the underworld and destroyed a major part of the government, along with the deaths of my ancestor and uncle. Rias said before feeling surprised slightly when Naruto nodded in approval. Good, then you're at least learning. You don't know me, for all you know everything I just said was bullshit. Plus, I doubt your mother and relatives in the Bael clan would have the best opinion of me nor an unbiased one. Something that I'm certain they made sure to pass on to you. But I prefer letting my actions speak for me, anyway. Naruto replied before he looked back at Izumi. Now I'm not just telling you this because you're my friend Izumi, it's also because you're involved as well since like me, you have a sacred gear within you too. Revealed Naruto, much to her shock. I have a sacred gear, Izumi said, shocked to hear this, before she started getting excited at the chance to have a powerful weapon like Naruto. Yes, but don't get too excited, while you have a sacred gear and a powerful one at that, they're incredibly dangerous to those that don't know how to use them. Even more oh with yours as it's a dragon type sacred gear, which are inherently even more powerful, especially with the right user. With your sacred gear already being a powerful one on top of being draconian in origin, it's something very dangerous. The worst case scenario being you awaken it and without the proper training, you could end up going berserk and killing everyone around you until someone manages to put you down. Naruto explained, causing Izumi to turn deathly pale while her excitement vanished. But don't worry, with the right training and time you would be able to use it safely, Naruto added quickly, not wanting to terrify Izumi into not wanting to learn to use her sacred gear, with the brunette thankfully calming down. A and would why yo you'll help Emmy? Izumi asked nervously, shaken that if she wasn't careful she could end up dying. Yes, I will. But that brings me to another thing. As I'm sure you've already guessed, everyone in the orc are devils, with Rias being the king and the rest of her peerage members. Naruto said while looking at Rias with Izumi doing the same, with the redhead nodding while summoning her remaining peerage pieces on the table, much to Izumi's shock. That's correct. Akano is my queen, Yudo my knight, and Kaneko my rook. I recruited all of them years ago, using each corresponding piece to reincarnate them into devils. Said Rias while taking over the explanation as she began explaining devil society to Izumi and filling her in on what peerages were. As for what Naruto meant, I wish to recruit you into my peerage after learning about your sacred gear. Something that'd go a long way in helping you to awaken your sacred gear and lowering the risk of going berserk unless you tried handling too much of its power before you're ready. Rias said as she finished her explanation with Izumi simply looking between her and Naruto in shock at all the information they just revealed. That's that's just a lot to take in, muttered Izumi, with Naruto wrapping an arm around her to comfort his friend. Yeah, I know the feeling when I first learned all this. Part of me thought I was just having some crazy dream, but even I couldn't think up all of this. And in regards to being a devil, the choice is entirely up to you Izumi, whether you want to join her peerage or stay human. But whatever you choose, I'll still be here whenever you need me for anything, said Naruto making the brunette smile slightly at him. He's right. While I wish for you to join my peerage, it'll be your choice on whether to join or not, and you'll still receive assistance in learning to control your sacred gear as well. Rias added, wanting Izumi to join, but knowing she can't force her or manipulate things to have a situation where she can recruit her. Though it did make Rias wince at her original plan, seeing how shaken Izumi was at everything she learned, and she would have simply taken advantage of her for her own needs. So the least the Grammary heiress could do is still help Izumi with controlling her sacred gear, even if she doesn't join her peerage. Thank you, both of you. But but could I have some time to think it over? Izumi asked, with Rias nodding in response. Take as long as you want, replied Rias, knowing it's a tough decision to make. Thanks. Though what exactly would the benefits be if I did become a devil? Questioned Izumi, wanting to hear the benefits of being a devil. For starters, you'll be a lot stronger, faster and more durable you'll gain demonic power which do a wide range of things from creating various elements, gain a resistance to light weapons depending on how much you'll have, and many other things you could think of or imagine. 
you'll also be able to fly with your wings, see in the dark and you'll have the chance to advance through the ranks to become a high class devil yourself and get your own peerage. Being able to recruit members to join you, fight in raiding games, with some devils even forming their own harems with their peerages. Rias explained, with Izumi immediately perking up at the last part. Form harems? I could form my own harem. I could make a harem for Naruto? Thought Izumi, thinking of how much easier her harem plan for Naruto would be if she had her own peerage. Though for you, the most important would be that it'll help you in controlling your sacred gear much more quickly than if you were human. Along with greatly lessening the risk of you going berserk. Added Rias, with the brunette nodding at this, knowing her sacred gear will eventually awaken. And that definitely sounded better than the alternatives, especially with how powerful her sacred gear apparently is, given it's of draconian origin. That all sounds really great, Izumi said as while she'd like the help in her harem plan for Naruto and learning to control her sacred gear, this is still a big decision to make. I understand, like I said, take as long as you'd like, and if you want, you and Naruto are welcome to spend your free time here at the Orc to get to know myself and my peerage better, as well as getting a feel for how things work here and what you'd be doing if you choose to join. Rias offered, extending the offer to Naruto as well out of courtesy, and the fact she doubted he'd stay away anyway since Izumi's his friend. With Izumi smiling at the offer, since that would be good and better help her in deciding if she'll join or not. Thank you, that'd be a really great way to get a better idea of what I'd be doing. Replied Izumi, while Naruto nodded in agreement. Great, then we'll see you both again when you're free. Said Rias while smiling at the brunette, with Izumi and Naruto gang up and leaving. You've certainly made a big name for yourself amongst the devils, and not in a good way. Izumi stated once they exited the clubhouse, with the Uzumaki nodding in agreement. Yeah, pretty sure if they could, they would have sent more assassins after me. Or maybe even Sears ex Lucifer himself would have come after me. Naruto said which only worried Izumi at the idea of Naruto being killed. Why haven't they? And how are you even still alive after what happened? Asked Izumi, since while she didn't doubt Naruto must be strong, she doubted he's at the level of a super devil. I have my own powerful allies in the supernatural world, starting with my adoptive mother. Let's just say that just her alone is enough to make sure the devils don't try anything, not if they want to keep existing. Replied Naruto, knowing it wouldn't take much, if any. Effort on Ophis's part to destroy every single devil there is, with Izumi looking at him in shock and intrigue. You seriously need to tell me everything that's happened to you, said Izumi as they headed back to class. With Reinare meanwhile, Reinare stood in the forest in the park, having just received a response from Azazel in regard to the plan being a no-go with Naruto's presence. With the fallen angel pulling out an envelope before opening it, causing a small holographic figure of Azazel to appear. Azazel is a tall man appearing to be in his twenties with an average build, black hair, golden bangs, and black goatee. He also possesses twelve jet black feathered wings that grow out from his back. He wore a v-neck maroon long coat with a wide, open high collar that opens up at the hem. The long coat also featured two black belts around the waist and four black bands on each arm, two of the bands at the wrist and the other two near the elbow. He wore grey slacks and brown shoes. Reinare, I don't know where these orders came from but I gave specific instructions to only observe the Hyodo girl and if necessary bring her to the Grigori to recruit her to safely learn to use her sacred gear. The same with the Argento girl, who was kicked out of the church. Do not, under any circumstances, extract her sacred gear, said the recording, with Reinare's eyes widening at this, since she'd been under the impression she was just meant to just kill Izumi, while extracting Asia's sacred gear for the Grigori to study. I'm not sure who tampered with your orders, but they knew enough Todake advantage of your loyalty to me and Shemazai so that you wouldn't question them if you believed they came from either of us. Once Asia Argento arrives in Kuo, take her to the devils there as I doubt it'll be safe for her to join the Grigori until I learn what's going on. And if necessary, get the prison dragon's help, if his friend was really being targeted then it'd be better if he knows we had nothing to do with it. One last thing, don't tell anyone about this and act like nothing's changed, I don't know who you can trust there. But figure out what you can then report back. Azazel said before the hologram vanished, while Reinare scowled and clenched her fists. Motherfuckers! Thought Reinare while punching her fist through a tree, angered that someone had been using and manipulating her by using her loyalty against her, while swearing if she finds out whoever it is, she'll drive a spear through their heads. Both of them if they're a guy. Taking a breath, Reinare remembered what else Azazel said, take Asia to the devils for her own safety and if necessary get the prison dragon's help knowing he meant Naruto when he said that. Something that would be good, since she didn't know who she could trust right now, if the rest of her teammates were in on it or not. I'll probably tell him anyway, if only to see what he'd do to the traitors, Reinare thought, knowing that Naruto wouldn't hesitate to kill anyone if they were a threat to his friend, 
before she took flight into the air to go back to the abandoned church. Though unknown to Reynare, she'd been followed and eavesdropped on by two of her supposed allies. Another fallen angel named Donaseek and a stray exorcist named Fried Selzen. Donaseek was a middle-aged looking man with short black hair and dark blue eyes. His attire consisted of a pale gray trench coat over a white dress shirt with a matching ascot, black pants and shoes, a pair of black gloves, and a black fedora. While Freed is a young man with short white hair and red eyes, as a priest, he was dressed in clerical clothing and often had a disturbing smile on his face. Well that's just fucking great, the bitch knows what's happening and won't kill the other bitch, even handing the damn nun over to those shitty devils. Freed shouted with a scowl on his face. Be quiet, she could still hear us. Let's go and speak with Kokabiel, said Donaseek as they left to a secure location, heading to an abandoned factory in town to use. Once there, Donaseek created a summoning circle on the ground before soon a holographic image of Kokabiel appeared in front of them. Kokabiel has the appearance of a man with long black hair and red eyes, and unlike other fallen angels, he has pointy ears. Kokabiel also possesses five pairs of black wings, showing his high-ranking status and power among the fallen angels. He wears a black robe with detailed accessories and purple shoulder pads with gold streaks on the side. What is it Donaseek? Is the human girl dead? Kokabiel demanded. No Kokabiel sama, the prison dragon has arrived in Kuo and it appears he's friends with the target. This prompted Reynare to contact Azazel, causing her to learn that his orders had been tampered with. She's now suspicious and isn't likely to trust any of us. Azazel's also ordered her to take the nun to the devils, rather than extract her sacred gear. Donaseek explained making the cadre scowl in annoyance at this wrench in his plans. Tisk, how annoying. Fine, when the time is right, usurp Reynare with the rest of the fallen angels and stray exorcists. Kokabiel ordered, refusing to let this ruin his plans entirely. And what do we do with afterwards? demanded Freed with a dark glint in his eyes. I don't care what you do, just make sure she doesn't get in the way again or contact Azazel, said Kokabiel, making the stray exorcist laugh madly. Fuck yeah. I'll finally get the chance to rape that sexy bitch, Freed shouted, eager for the chance to rape Reynare, having wanted her body when she first showed up and will now get his chance. What about Middleton and Kalawarner? questioned Donaseek since they were the two wildcards, as there's no telling who they'd side with, either remaining loyal to the Grigori or joining them to not be killed. Leave them, if they're smart, they'll join the winning side when the time comes. If not, then deal with them along with Reynare. As for the nun, bring her to me so I can extract Twilight Healing myself," said Kokabiel, having planned to use Reynare as a temporary vessel for the twilight healing before taking it for himself, but now he wants the sacred gear brought directly to him. With Donaseek and Freed nodding at their new orders before the hologram vanished, while the two left to ensure that nothing else happens to mess with the now changed plan. After school ended for the day, Rias met up with her friend and fellow king, Sona Citri, at the orc clubhouse to discuss Naruto's presence. Sona is a young bespectacled woman with a slim figure, black hair styled in a short bob cut and violet eyes. And while not as busty as Rias or Akeno, the Citri heiress did still have an alluring figure, which did get her attention and made her the third most popular girl in Kuo Academy after Rias and Akeno, with her currently wearing the Kuo Academy girl's uniform. With Sona having arrived not long after, leading to the two friends playing a game of chess while Rias filled her in on her meeting with Naruto and Izumi along with just why Naruto and his allied wiped out most of the Great King faction. Do you believe he was being honest? Sona asked with a frown, as if it was true then even she couldn't argue against Naruto's reasoning for wanting revenge for the death of his parents. I'd like to believe no one would lie about such a thing, but I also can't take it anything he says at face value, especially with what else he said. Though I am having Gasper look into it, seeing if she can find out if it's true or not, replied Rias while moving one of her pawns with Sona nodding in approval at this while moving her rook. That's good, since we still don't know anything about Uzumaki or if he could have ulterior motives here in Kuo. But it'd also be foolish if we made a move against him ourselves. Stayed Sona, something the redhead had to agree with, knowing how dangerous it'd be to antagonize Naruto. And sorry if Hyodo decides against joining your peerage, I know you've had your eye on recruiting her. Sona added, with Rhea sighing and shaking her head. It's fine. While I do hope Izumi will accept my offer, I won't hold it against her if she doesn't. Besides, even if she doesn't join my peerage, it'll be good to still have her as an ally and friend. Rias said, given if her sacred gear is a powerful one, especially since it's of draconian origin, then Izumi will still be a powerful ally to have on her side. While for Naruto, Rias figured that at the moment they'll be having a, you leave me alone, 
I leave you alone, agreement. Whether that changes for better or for worse will depend on how things proceed for the time being. Sona nodded in agreement, knowing even if they don't recruit certain people into their peerage, it'd still be preferable to have them as friends and allies rather than risk antagonizing them. Never knowing when they could help or be able to go where devils can't go. It also helps that she's really started improving herself and her peerage. Sona thought as after the destruction of the Great King faction, Rias had begun seriously training herself and her peerage, as well as several of the younger devils, including Sona herself. Given that several of the oldest and strongest devils had been wiped out, with a human being the one leading the attack, it was definitely a wake-up call for the entire underworld. That even with all their powers and abilities, as well as the peerage system to help bring their numbers back up, they weren't invincible. Leading to many young devils to start training themselves in their peerages, or training even more in the case of those like Rias's cousin Cyroorg. None of them wnting to risk experience another attack, or encountering Naruto and his allies, nor those like them in the human world. But Sona knew there were still those that hadn't been scared or threatened by Naruto's attack, believing they simply got lucky or were fighting dirty to wipe out the Great King faction. Still feeling assured in themselves, their power, or their connections that nothing can happen to them. Along with those that held a grudge against Naruto for blatantly attacking the underworld and wiping out so many devils. Let's just hope none of them are foolish enough to try anything, unless they want to experience another reminder that we aren't untouchable. Thought Sona before looking up at Rias. Also, while I enjoy getting the chance to play you Rias, you do know I'm aware that you're simply stalling to put off speaking with Sears X Sama. Sona stated, both of them knowing how Sears X would react to the fact Naruto is now in Kuo, it'd be a miracle if he didn't instantly teleport here himself. And you aren't doing the same for Seraphal Sama? Rias asked rhetorically before being met with silence since Sona knew her sister would have a similar reaction to Sears X. Well, we can continue putting it off. In which case they'll likely end up finding out on their own which will definitely be even worse. Or we can get it over with and hopefully prevent them from doing anything drastic. Said Sona after a few moments, making Rias sigh but knew her friend was right and that it'd be better to contact their respective siblings sooner rather than later. Stopping their game, Rias and Sona both created magic circles on the ground to contact their siblings. Both girls waiting a few moments before watching as holographic images of Sears X and Seraphal appeared in front of them. Sears X is a handsome man who seems to be in his early twenties. He has shoulder-length crimson red hair and blue-green eyes, just like Rias's own. With his outfit consisting of the formal Mao Lucifer attire to signify his rank as ruler of the underworld. While Seraphal is a beautiful girl, looking to be in her late teens with black hair tied into twin tails and blue eyes, she also has a childlike body, albeit with large breasts. With her own attire being a pink and white magical girl outfit. Rias Tan. What did you need me for? Sears X asked happily at being contacted by his little sister. So Tan, you're called too. Did you both missing your big brother and Biss sister? Said Seraphal with stars in her eyes that Sona was calling her, rather than needing to visit her sister. Nisama, it's good to see you but please behave as this isn't a social call. Rias said, not having time for her brother's antics. Agreed Nisama, Rias and I contacted you both to tell you that Naruto Uzumaki is here in Kuo. Revealed Sona, wiping away any happiness Sirzex and Seraphal were feeling at her words. What? Seraphal screamed in shock and horror that their sisters were now in the same town as Naruto. What happened? Are you too hurt? Has he done anything? Did he attack? Do you need us to come there now? Sears X demanded rapidly, worried and fearful of something happening to Rias. We're fine. We're absolutely fine. There's no need for either of you to come here, Sona said quickly and loudly, with Rias nodding in agreement. Sona's right. Nothing has happened, yet at least. I was informed a few days ago by Kaneko of his presence while scouting out a potential peerage member. He appears to not be hostile, as I was able to meet with him earlier today to learn why he's here in Kuo and then I also learned why he and his allies wiped out the Great King faction. Said Rias, much to the shock of both Maos before they turned serious. Tell us everything. Said Sears X, with Rias nodding as she began explaining everything Naruto had revealed, his reasoning for being back in Kuo and why he wiped out the Great King faction. With Sears X and Seraphal listening with frowns on their faces, they were surprised when Rias revealed his reasoning for his attack on the underworld. While I don't know if he was being truthful, I do have Gasper looking into the matter to see if he's telling the truth. He and Izumi will also be spending time here at the Orc, so she can get a feel for what it'd be like to be a devil should she take my offer. Which will also give us more chances to observe him and see what else we can learn. Rias said as she finished her explanation, with Sears X nodding with a frown on his face. I don't like the idea of either of you or your peerages being anywhere near him, 
but it's smart to use the chance to see if he was telling the truth and gather more information on him. But regardless of his reasoning, Naruto Uzumaki still lead an assault against the underworld's government, striking a blow against all of us. Even if it did help us gain full control of the underworld and start better organizing everything. Said Sears X, as without the Great King faction, he and the other four great Satans no longer had to play political tug of war anymore in making decisions for the Devil faction. Sears X is right, but we at least know it wasn't an attack against the entire underworld, and it is understandable why he'd do it, if he's telling the truth. Seraphal added, something they all had to agree on, doubting they'd act any differently if something like that happened to their families. So should we just keep going with the watch and wait approach? Rias asked, with Sears X and Seraphal nodding in agreement. That would be for the best, watching and waiting to see if he does end up proving to be a threat or planning something. Though while we trust you both, we'll be sending someone else to join you in Kuo, as we also can't be too careful when it comes to Naruto Uzumaki. This way we can better observe, and if necessary, deal with him. Sears X said, preferring if Rias and Sona had some backup if the worse happened. Should I go as well Sears X? Just in case, said Seraphal given how plenty of devil clans had a grudge against Naruto for his attack, anyone they send could likely try antagonizing Naruto simply to have an excuse to attack him, if they didn't attack him outright. Plus, this did technically fall under her jurisdiction of foreign affairs. No, having a Mao appear would like only set him on edge and make things more difficult, perhaps later on, once we have a better feel for the situation. As for who we'll be sending, it's someone we can trust and be strong enough to help you both. Sirzek said, not wanting to take any risks by having a Mao appear in Kuo. With Rias and Sona frowning at the idea of them sending someone else to Kuo, feeling annoyed that they weren't trusted enough to deal with the situation themselves. But they also knew even if they refused, Sears X and Seraphal would still probably send someone anyway. Fine. Can we at least know when this person will be arriving? Rias asked, reluctantly agreeing, but still not liking the idea of being watched. And would they be taking part in governing Kuo, should we be unable to? questioned Sona, with her and Rias being thankful when Sears X and Seraphal shook their heads. No they'll merely be there to help observe Naruto, otherwise both of you will still be in full control of governing Kuo. Seraphal replied, much to both girls' relief that they won't have anyone interfering in their business. As for when they'll arrive, within the next few days, said Sears X, with Rias and Sona nodding at this before the holograms vanished. So wanna finish the game? Rias asked while looking at Sona since they were still in the middle of their chess game. Why not? replied Sona with a shrug as they resumed their game. With Naruto and Izumi meanwhile, Naruto and Izumi were heading over to the latter's home, with the Uzumaki wanting to get started on the brunette's training and Izumi wanting to see where her friend lived. With Izumi having also told her parents where she'd be, so they didn't worry about her not coming home. The two soon arriving at a large set of black iron gates with the ST Lizd infinity symbol on them, with Izumi looking closely and was surprised to see glowing symbols lining the gate. Those are magic seals, or runes as they're more commonly referred to as. They help protect this place from intruders, alert me when anyone that's not registers in them tries to enter, and shields it from anyone who gets too close, along with several other defenses. I already made it so you're registered and able to come and go as you please. Naruto said, much to Izumi's amazement before she smiled that he's already letting her come into his home whenever she wants. Though Izumi was amazed when they entered the gates and she got her first look at Naruto's house, seeing that calling it a house was an underestimate. You live here? Izumi asked in shock and amazement upon seeing that Naruto's home was a massive six story mansion, with the Uzumaki scratching the back of his head sheepishly. Aya Ka San's the one who had it built this way, claiming that such things were a status symbol of someone's wealth, power, and standing in the supernatural world, replied Naruto, having told Ophis that he didn't mind if his home was a small one, but she insisted on making it bigger. In fact, he'd only been able to convince her to make it only six stories with three basements rather than what she really wanted to make. Though Naruto guessed that he could understand the size, given how some of the allies and friend he's made would be able to stay here much more easily with how many rooms there were. Wow I wouldn't mind getting the chance to live here, said Izumi in awe and liking the idea of living with Naruto. I wouldn't mind if you did, Naruto said, not minding if Izumi wanted to move in, making the brunette blush before smiling slyly at Naruto. Already asking me to move in, Naruto? At least buy me dinner first. Izumi said while hugging his arm between her breasts, with Naruto blushing at her advancement. You uh, L let's go inside, A and I can't G give you a tour, th there's also someone I want you to meet, said Naruto, figuring that with Izumi now being aware of the supernatural, he can introduce her to Kuroka, with the brunette getting interested at hearing someone else is already here. Heading up to the house, 
Naruto and Izumi headed inside where they were greeted by Kuroka in her cat form, making Izumi smile and pet her when she ran up to them. Hi Karara, it's nice to see you again too, Izumi said while petting Kuroka as she nuzzled against her. Actually, that's another thing I wanted to tell you, she knows Kuroka, you can show yourself. Said Naruto, confusing the brunette, only to be surprised when Kuroka jumped back and began transforming until in her place was a young woman. Kuroka is a beautiful young woman with a voluptuous figure, long black hair with split bangs, two cat ears on top of her head, two black cattails, and hazel gold eyes with cat like pupils. Her attire consists of a black kimono, a yellow obi, a set of golden beads, and an ornately detailed headband. The kimono features a red interior and it is open at her shoulders, giving view to her large breasts which rival those of Rias and Akano in terms of size. The sight shocking Izumi, before blushing brightly when Kuroka wrapped her arms around her while pressing their breasts together. NYA. So nice to finally meet you Izumi-chan, Naruto-kun talks about you a lot. And I must say, you really know how to get all the right spots, maybe I can show you some other spots I'd love you to pet. Kuroka purred causing the brunette's blush to intensify along with some blood dripping from her nose, before she quickly wiped it away when Naruto pulled the Neko show away. Stop that! Naruto said before Kuroka immediately grabbed his arm between her breasts. Ah, don't worry Naruto-kun, we wouldn't leave you out, right Izumi-chan? And besides, you still have to give me lots of kittens, NYA! said Kuroka while leaning in closely to Naruto, making him and Izumi blush at her words. I think that I might have just found myself an ally with the harem plan, Izumi thought, seeing Kuroka as an excellent potential ally and sister in arms to help her make Naruto into a harem king. Saint stop that, a eh, anyway, Izumi, this is Kuroka, a friend that I made during my travels. She's a yokai known as a nekosho, a rare subspecies of nekomata, and an incredibly powerful one at that. Being a master of yujutsu and senjutsu, as well as an expert magician. Along with being skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Naruto said, though not mentioning she's also a devil, given that was something for Kuroka to reveal along with her history when she wanted to. I've also been trusted by Naruto kun's Kasan to be one of his bodyguards while his primary one is away, not that I need much reason to be near you. Kuroka said while smiling slyly at Naruto, with Izumi being surprised at learning she's his bodyguard. Wow, you must be pretty strong, Izumi stated, making the Neko show smirk. Yep, I'm strong enough to even go against ultimate class devils and defeat them said Kuroka, amazing Izumi even further upon hearing how powerful she is. Which is why Kuroka will also be helping in your training, given her knowledge on magic and martial arts will be able to go a long way in helping to strengthen your body and mind in awakening your sacred gear. Plus, it'll also help you gain some other skills to fall back on, rather than rely on your sacred gear. Said Naruto, getting a confused look from Izumi. But isn't my sacred gear really strong, wouldn't I just need that once I'm able to use it? Izumi asked only to yelp when Naruto flicked her forehead. That kind of thinking is what'll get you killed when you face someone stronger than you, or someone who has an even stronger sacred gear. Just because you have one, doesn't mean it should your only source of power. I have four sacred gears, but that doesn't stop me from learning other fighting styles. And there are plenty of humans without sacred gears, who are able to keep up with supernatural beings by just using martial arts and or magic, sometimes even surpassing them. Naruto explained, surprising the brunette. How strong could a human get? Questioned Izumi, not sure how strong humans could get in comparison to the supernatural. Put it this way, one of the most powerful humans gained the titles, the true devil, and limits of humanity. And that's with no sacred gear, no combat magic, no weapons, just pure physical power. Said Naruto, as while he may not like the church, he couldn't deny that Vasco Strada is someone that earned his reputation, while Izumi was shocked that a human could reach that kind of power. Whoa! Izumi muttered in disbelief, with Naruto and Kuroka nodding in agreement as it can be surprising to learn of humans that can keep up with, and even surpass, supernatural beings. And that's just one example, there are others that have become powerful as well in keeping up with the supernatural, with or without sacred gears, Kuroka added. That's right. Now let's go, I'll give a tour of the place and then we can get started on your training, said Naruto while motioning Izumi to follow him and Kuroka, with the brunette nodding as she followed after the two. Finding that the first floor contained a conjoined living room, kitchen, and dining area, as well as a bathroom, guest rooms, and a few Japanese-styled rooms. The second floor was where Naruto's room was, along with two conjoined rooms on either side of his, having doors that go into both of them. The third floor had a study, and some empty rooms with one of them belonging to Kuroka. The fourth and fifth floors contained more empty rooms that could be used. The sixth floor was a meeting room, 
which Naruto said would be used for whenever he'd need to deal with any visitors. Then the rooftop had a lounge area, a garden with different plants and vegetables, and a small shrine in the corner. Then Izumi was only further amazed when she was shown the basement which also contained three different floors. The first containing a movie theater, training rooms, changing rooms, and a large indoor bath which had a refrigerator filled with different drinks, a hidden room, and a second hidden room also contains an assortment of baths of various sizes, but are noticeably larger than the first and are decorated gorgeously with ornate patterns, tropical plants, dragon statues pouring water into the bath, and a large infinity symbol. The second floor had a heated indoor swimming pool, more storage rooms, and other hidden rooms as well. And the third floor was mostly vacant, being used as a garage, storage, and having a large library in it. While all the floors had been renovated to be accessed by an elevator, making it easier to get around than taking the stairs all the time. What do you think? Naruto asked once they returned to the ground floor, with Izumi having a look of pure awe and amazement. I'm not sure if I'd ever want to leave this place, said Izumi, making Naruto laugh slightly, knowing the place was a bit much. Well don't get too attached, since now we're going outside to start your training. First we'll be doing some meditation, stated Naruto, snapping Izumi out of her odd stated. Meditation? Izumi asked, wondering how that would help. Yep, it helps focus your mind and remain calm making it a good exercise for sacred gear users to better handle the power their sacred gears have, allowing them to remain calm and in control rather than going berserk. It's also used by yokai that practice senjutsu, which can be dangerous to first-timers. Said Kuroka since using senjutsu opened one up to reading and handling spirit power, which included the malice and corruption that flowed through the earth, something that could end up corrupting the user, like what everyone believed happened to her when she killed her king. Hearing this, Izumi nodded in understanding now seeing how useful meditation would for her training, with the three heading into the backyard to begin her training. Time skip one day the next day Naruto woke up to feeling a weight on his chest, with the Uzumaki already knowing who it was from the feeling of their body. Being proven right when he opened his eyes and found his adoptive mother laying in his bed, completely naked. What are you doing here, Ka-san? Naruto asked, with Ophis opening her eyes and yawning before sitting up, not caring about her lack of clothing. It got lonely and cold sleeping by myself. Sleeping with you feels much better and you're really warm Sochi. Stated Ophis before laying back down and wrapping her arms around him, sighing contently at being close to her adopted son before she looked at him with a spark of worry in her normally expressionless eyes. And I was worried about you. Having you go off into devil territory, especially the territory that belongs to the sisters of two mouths. I was worried something would happen, given how most of them see you. Ophis added, making Naruto smile slightly since it's rare for her to show concern or any emotions. Thanks Ka-san, but I'm fine. I actually met with one of them yesterday, Rias Grimori. She and her peerage seem pretty reasonable, at least from what I've seen, not sure about the Citri heiresses though. But from what I've heard, she sounds pretty level-headed, replied Naruto, with Ophis nodding in agreement given what she's heard about the two. Are you considering giving them one of those? Questioned Ophis, with the Uzumaki frowning at the question, knowing what she meant. If they can prove trustworthy, though given the circumstances with Rias, I may consider giving her one, should she be compatible, if only as insurance and see if it'd help me earn some of their trust. Naruto said, knowing it'd be better to have Rias and Sona on his side, or at least trust him, as that'd get the Mao off his back and leaving only the devil families who wanted him dead. Um, I can also sense your friend's sacred gear from here, it's a powerful one, Ophis stated, being able to sense the sacred gear in Izumi. Can you tell which one it is? Naruto asked, knowing that'd be able to help in Izumi's training knowing what sacred gear she has. The brunette having done pretty good the other day in her training, starting out with some meditation before moving on martial arts, then finishing with magic. The latter of which she needed to learn the theory behind first before being able to practice it. With Izumi having soaked up everything he and Kuroka had to teach her before heading home once it got late. With Naruto also having Kuroka follow Izumi home, not wanting to take any risks with the fallen angels in Kuo, since he still didn't know their purpose for being here. Yes, but I'm not gonna say anything. It'll be more fun when you discover it, Ophis said with a small smirk, having learned it was fun teasing her adoptive son. Of course you would, Naruto said, sighing before getting up since he still needed to get ready for school. Also, one more thing, Yuki just returned from her mission and she was very upset that you left without her, even more so that you left with Kuroka instead. So expect her to be arriving in a few days and expect her to feel slighted. Ophis added, with her smirk growing as Naruto froze and paled slightly. Fuck! thought Naruto, 
knowing how seriously Yuki took her duties as his vassal bodyguard, despite his discomfort with that and preferring if she called herself his friend instead. And for her to hear he not only left without her, but that Kuroka had been assigned to be his guard in her place. Naruto was dreading when she arrived. Later, after meeting up with Izumi, the two headed for Kuo Academy, where they'd met up with Murayama, Kates, and Aika as well. The five of them making small talk on the way to class, only stopping once the lecture had begun. Currently though, it was break time, with Naruto wanting to explore more of Kuo on his own while the girls hung out. Gotta admit, I may not like school, but this definitely one I don't mind going to. Naruto thought after going outside and looking at Kuo, admiring the sight of the large buildings before he continued exploring. Soon finding himself at the tennis courts where he found someone hard at work, practicing with a machine shooting tennis balls at them. Before his attention turned to what looked like a suit of armor with a watermelon for a head, though he didn't sense anyone inside the armor. That's a Dullahan, right? Naruto called out, getting the person's attention as they turned towards him, showing they were a girl. They were a busty young woman with fair skin, long, brown hair arranged in multiple drill-like curls, and pale blue-gray eyes, with her wearing a tennis uniform. The girl looked at him in surprise before she turned off the machine and set her racket down before smiling at Naruto. So you're the new student I've heard about, along with being the one who's apparently said Rias, Sona, and their peerages on edge, said the girl as she walked up to Naruto, who looked at her with a raised brow. I'm surprised you know about that, but given the Dullahan over there, I'm guessing you're in the know about the supernatural, I'd say a beast tamer, right? said Naruto, making the girl's smile widen as she nodded. Yep, I'm Kiyom Abe, beast tamer and captain of the tennis team. The Dullahan is Mr. Smith, though right now he's the tennis team's mascot no head Honda Kun. Given right now, his head is currently in the hospital recovering from a hernia, so he's having me look after his body and horse. Kiyom said, confusing Naruto. How does that even happen? thought Naruto, wondering how a Dullahan, which was just an animated set of armor, could get a hernia. Well that's kind of you, and I'm Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet you Kiyom. Introduce Naruto as he smiled at the brunette while holding out his hand, which Kiyom shook with her own smile. You too, Naruto, replied Kiyom before going over to bag and pulling out a water bottle. So, besides the Dullahan, what other creatures do you have serving you? Naruto asked since it's always interesting to meet a beast tamer and seeing the creatures they have with them. Plenty of them, including a Hari, a mermaid, a Lamia, a Yuki Ona and plenty more. I've also taught all the creatures of tame to play tennis, though Rias and Sona don't like me bringing them to school. Kiyom said, with Naruto nodding since those are some pretty good creatures to have. The Yuki Ona you have, is it the human kind or the yeti kind? Questioned Naruto, getting a surprised look from the brunette. What? That's just a tall tale, they aren't actually beautiful women, said Kiyom, only for Naruto to smirk and shake his head. No it's not, I've met Yuki Ona like that before, befriended some as well. They simply hide themselves while making everyone think they don't exist and only the Yeti versions do, they actually find it pretty funny, said Naruto, laughing slightly, with Kiyom being surprised to hear this. Ha I guess I don't know everything about supernatural creatures, Kiyom said with a frown having prided herself on having knowledge on different types of supernatural creatures, now hearing she didn't know everything about one she has with her. Don't take it personally, I've met other beast tamers who are older and more knowledgeable that don't know everything. It's all about the location you live in and the creatures that inhabit it, while I've traveled all over and seen lots of different creatures. Naruto said, making the beast tamer perk up and look at him. Would you be able to tell me more about them? Kiyom asked, wanting to expand her knowledge on supernatural creatures so she'd know more about them if she ever encountered ones she didn't know about. Sure, I also have some books you could borrow as well, offered Naruto as he sat down besides Kiyom, with her smiling at this. I'd really like that, thanks, said Kiyom, the Uzumaki nodding in response before he began telling Kiyom about the different types of supernatural creatures he's encountered, along with correcting anything she thought was true. Later once school ended, Naruto and Izumi made their way to the orc clubhouse, with the brunette looking at Naruto. Where exactly were you during break? Izumi asked, having not found Naruto anywhere. I was at the tennis courts with Kiyom Abe, she's actually a beast tamer, replied Naruto, surprising Izumi at hearing this. Beast tamer? What's that? questioned Izumi. They're humans that know about the supernatural while taming different creatures to serve them. Kiyom has a few serving her already. Though she also isn't aware of all the facts about them. So we sat down and talked while I told her everything I knew about different supernatural creatures and correcting some things for her. Naruto said, surprising Izumi once again upon hearing that he's met supernatural creatures as well. 
Okay. You seriously need to tell me what you've been up to the past 10 years. Izumi stated, feeling like she's learning something new about her friend every minute since yesterday. I'll let you read some of the journals I've kept. Said Naruto with a smirk, having made a few journals over the years to always remember everything he's done, who he's met, along with ones to help improve my training and new things to learn. The two soon arrived at the clubhouse and went inside, only to see Rias was there alone, the redhead looking up surprised to see them here. Izumi, Naruto, I wasn't expecting you two here already, Rias stated, having thought it'd take a few days before they decided to come by. You said come by whenever we had some free time, we had some free time, said Naruto with a raised brow, making Rias blush slightly in embarrassment since she did say that. Where are the others? Izumi asked, wondering where Akano, Kaneko, and Yuto are. They're out at the moment, I sent them to deal with a stray devil named Visor, who's taken up residence in a warehouse, consuming humans unfortunate enough to find her. I've sent Akano, Kaneko and Yuto to deal with her. Rias replied, knowing they can handle it on their own. Stray devils are ones that abandoned or killed their kings, right? Said Izumi, remembering the explanation from yesterday, with Rias nodding with a smile. Correct. Stray devils are ones that have abandoned or killed their kings to pursue their own selfish desires, and without their kings to keep their power in check they grow uncontrollable, mutating and changing until they become a monster inside and out. Stray devils are taken very seriously and must be terminated on the spot before they can cause any more harm. Said Rias, making Naruto frown at her words. And what about the strays that simply wanted to get away? Naruto asked, making the girls look at him, with Rias looking at him with a raised brow. Whether they wanted to simply get away or not, they still abandoned or killed their kings and peerages. If nothing was done that'd simply encourage others to do same, knowing there wouldn't be consequences, Rias said. So if any of your peerages members left for whatever reason, would you kill them? Challenged Naruto, much to their shock. Of course not, Rias said immediately, feeling a little angry that he'd even think she'd kill one of her friends. But you just said all strays have to be killed. If a member of your peerage left without your permission, that'd make them a stray and thus marked for death. Naruto stated, throwing her words back at her. Well none of them would do such a thing, they trust me and I trust them. Rias retorted, not believing any member of her peerage would leave unless they were being forced to. But what if they did? Or what if they needed to kill another devil, a pure-blooded one, to protect someone they care about? Would that make them a stray? Naruto said while walking up and putting his hand on her desk, looking at Rias challengingly. No, if it was to protect someone they care about, I would defend them, said Rias, feeling like he was trying to test her loyalty to her friends. And what if no one cared for the why? Only seeing a reincarnated devil killing a naturally born one. What would you do then, if no one cared? Naruto challenged, making Rias look at him with wide eyes. I, Rias said, not being able to come up with an answer, but knew that if such a thing happened, other devils would always take the pureblood side while condemning the reincarnated devil. Keep that thought in mind, along with remembering what I said about taking things at face value, said Naruto before he went and sat down. One thing he promised to do for Kuroka after learning about her history and what happened to her, was that he'd help clear her name and reunite her with her sister, refusing to let her be remembered as having abandoned Kaneko when she gave up everything to protect her. So oh uh, what exactly would my duties be if I joined your peerage? Izumi asked, hoping to change the subject, given it seemed the last one was making things rather tense with Rias shaking her head and looking at the brunette. Your responsibilities would be rather simple, you just have to pass out flyers and wait to be summoned by humans and fulfill the tasks they have for you, they're mostly simple ones that are basically just odd jobs anyone could perform, but with an extra flair thanks to our powers. And should a client be satisfied with your performance then you can form a contract with them, allowing you to keep going back to them fulfilling their requests. You'd also participate in raiding games with the rest of us against other peerages. Both these methods help devils in advancing in rank until they reach high class to get the chance to receive their own peerages. Rias explained, with Izumi nodding at this before she began asking other questions and clarification on other things they couldn't go over yesterday. Time skip one day after they finished speaking with Rias, Naruto and Izumi headed to the latter's house to resume the brunette's training, before Izumi returned home once it got late. With them meeting up the next day and heading to school, with the two making small talk on the way to Kuo Academy only for them to stop when Izumi accidentally bumped into someone, knocking them both to the ground. Oh, sorry about that, I wasn't really paying attention to where I was going, said Izumi sheepishly as she stood up. I it's fine, I wasn't paying attention either, the person said, their voice revealing she was a girl, with Naruto and Izumi looking at her. She was a pretty young girl with long blonde hair, and green eye, her hair flows all the way down to her back, 
with split bangs over her forehead and a single strand sticking out from the top and sloping backward. Her attire consisted of a dark teal nun outfit with light blue accents, a white veil over her head with light blue accents, a brown satchel slung on her right hip, and brown boots with black straps in an X-shaped pattern. She also wore a silver cross necklace around her neck. She's so cute, Izumi thought while mentally squealing at how adorable the girl was. Are you all right, sister? Naruto asked while offering her a hand up, which she accepted with a grateful smile. Why yes, I'm fine and thank you, replied the nun. No problem, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Introduced Naruto while smiling at the girl. I'm his friend, Izumi Hiyoto, and I'm really sorry about bumping into you. Izumi said with a bow, making the girl blush in embarrassment. I it's fine, really, you don't need to bow, and it's nice meeting you Naruto, Izumi. I'm Asia Argento. Though um if you could help me, I'm actually a little lost right now, I just arrived in town and I can't find where the church is. Do either of you know where it is? Asia asked hoping they'd be able to help her, with Naruto and Izumi frowning at this, the brunette having been told about the presence of the fallen angels in town and the fact they're likely set up in the abandoned church. And hearing that Asia is looking for the church, not seeming to know it was abandoned, definitely told them something was wrong. Sorry, but we don't actually know where it is, lied Izumi. Oh oh, said Asia while looking down sadly before looking up when Naruto put his hand on her shoulder, seeing the whiskered blonde smiling at her. But since you're new to Kuo and don't know where everything is, you'd be more than welcome to stay my home until you're more familiar with the layout. That way you won't just be wandering around with nowhere to stay. Naruto offered, surprising the nun at the offer. Ah really? I don't know, I wouldn't want to get in the way or anything. Asia said, only for Naruto to wave it off. It's fine, trust me, you wouldn't be getting in the way with how big my home is. I could take you there now if you want, but I wouldn't be able to stay since I have school. Though a friend of mine is already staying there and she can help you get settled. Said Naruto, with Asia not expecting the kind offer. Well um if if it really wouldn't be any trouble, said Asia, since she didn't have anywhere to stay at the moment. You wouldn't be. Naruto stated while smiling reassuringly at Asia, who slowly returned the smile. Th then alright, Asia replied, nodding and accepting the offer. Great. Azumi you go on ahead, I'll take Asia home and help her get settled before meeting you at the academy said naruto with izumi nodding before smiling at asia okay see you then and nice meeting you asia i hope we can hang out later after school izumi said while smiling at the nun who was surprised at this before soon smiling happily and nodding i'd i'd really like that asia replied before following naruto to his home none of them seeing reinare flying high up in the air having been on her way to meet asia after learning she'd arrived in kuo only to see she'd met naruto and izumi first well Guess that's one thing I don't have to worry about, Reinare thought, glad and relieved that Asia's now with Naruto, knowing aside from the devils, he's the one who'd be the most able in keeping her safe. Which also left her to simply find out who the traitor is and dealing with them, with the Ravenette flying back to the abandoned church to continue her investigation as to who the traitor is. Though the moment she arrived, Reinare felt tense and on edge at seeing how empty it was, knowing at least one of the other fallen angels would be around. Yet she didn't see anyone inside or outside making Reinare form a light spear and look around warily. Only for his eyes to widen before quickly jumping out of the doorway, just as dozen of light bullets shot out of the floor where she'd been standing. Followed by all the exorcists jumping out from the hidden area below the church. Fucking damn it. The bitch survived. Shouted Freed as he and Donaseek stepped out from where they were hiding, making Reinare scowl at the sight of them along with the exorcists and lower ranked fallen angels standing with them. I shouldn't even be surprised you two psychotic dumbasses are the traitors. Reinare said while mentally cursing herself, since it's obvious the battle maniac and the psychotic killer were the traitors. Traitors? No, we're just smart enough to be on the winning side, just like Warner was. Said Donaseek with a smirk, causing Reinare's eyes to widen before she quickly turned around, blocking a light spear from Warner. Warner was a tall and buxom woman with brown eyes and long, navy blue hair that obscured her right eye. Her attire consisted of a maroon, trenchcoat-like top with a wide collar a matching miniskirt, and black-heeled shoes. The trenchcoat top was open at her chest, giving view to her breasts and cleavage. She also wore a gold necklace around her neck. She appears to wear a white shirt underneath her top, but it can only be seen from the bottom. Kala Warner? What the hell, I thought you were loyal to Azazel-sama? Reinare demanded, not expecting Kala Warner would actually betray Azazel. Meh, I was. But I'd prefer watching the chaos unfold from this little plan they told me about 
since it sounds a lot more fun, said Calawarner with a cruel smirk, making Reynare glare at her before gritting her teeth in pain when one of the exorcists shot her in the shoulder. Hey, fucking watch it, I want the bitch alive, Freed shouted before shooting the stray exorcist in the head, angry at them for shooting Reynare when he hasn't had his fun yet. And should I expect Middle to be a traitor too? Reynare demanded, not seeing any sign of the lowly fallen angel. You should expect to see her pretty soon, little bitch was too stupid not to, said Donaseek before crying out when a pink light spear was stabbed through his shoulder. Next time, you fucks should send more competent minions or make sure the little bitch is dead, yourself. Middle shouted, glaring at them murderously, having dealt with the exorcists they'd left behind to kill her. Middle was a girl with blonde hair styled into twin tails and blue eyes. She wore a gothic Lolita attire, which consisted of a black Lolita dress with white frills, a large black bow on the front, and a green jewel embedded on the collar, white thigh high socks, and black shoes. She also wore a large black bow on top of her hair. With her sudden appearance getting everyone's attention, along with giving Reynare the chance to slam her knee into Calawarner's chin before kicking her away. Glad to see one of you is still loyal, Reynare said, relieved to see Middle didn't betray her as well. Like I'd side with dumbasses like them to begin with. Or turn traitor like the walking pairs of tits, Middle said, glaring at Calawarner with how easily she joined Donaseek and Freed. At least I have tits, taunted Calawarner. Yet everyone seems to look at mine more than yours, bitch. Reynare said mockingly making the blue net scowl and create another light spear. I'm gonna enjoy watching you both die. Calawarner growled, while Reynare and Middle stood together and created their own light spears. Not as much as we are watching you all get killed by our hands, Middle retorted. Later or club. Is something wrong bucko? Yuto asked looking at Rias, who'd been silent for most of the day and deep in thought since she seemed to just be going through the usual motions, being proven right when the redhead didn't immediately reply after taking a moment to hear what he said. Hum, what? Oh, yes, I'm fine Kiba, just something Naruto said yesterday when he and Izumi came by. Replied Rias, having been thinking about what Naruto said, trying to figure out if there was kind of hidden meaning behind his words, if he's trying to make her think of something or the chance that he's just trying to get in her head. What did he say? Akano asked with a frown, refusing to let the whiskered blonde mess with her friend like that. Just hypothetically, if any of you ever learned that any one of us was in danger from another devil, what would you do? Rias asked, confusing Akano, Kaneko and Kiba at the sudden question before they traded looks with each other before looking back at Rias. I'm sure you already know the answer, bucko, said Akano, with Yuto and Kaneko nodding in agreement, knowing they'd do everything they can to protect each other from anyone, whether they're a human, devil, angel or fallen angel. Even if doing so meant you'd be labeled a stray devil in the process, said Rias, surprising the three at this, only for them to nod immediately afterwards. If it meant protecting each other, then I'd say it'd be worth being labeled a stray devil as long as I knew my friends and comrades were safe. Yudo said, with Akano and Kaneko nodding in agreement, making Rias smile glad to have such loyal friends and peerage members. Did something happen bucko? Something bad? Kaneko asked, wondering if Rias was in trouble to ask them that. No, nothing bad. I'm just thinking about the you know what I have to deal with and how far I'd need to go to get out of it, Rias said, making them think it's about her marriage contract with Riser not wanting them to worry or think it has to do with Naruto. You have nothing to worry about, bucko. We'll deal with it together, Akano said while smiling at her friend. We'll beat the fried yakitori, stated Kaneko, making Rias laugh slightly and nod in agreement. Though suddenly, the four of them jumped when they heard something crash nearby, followed by hearing panicked screaming from the academy. Making them all immediately rush towards the academy ready in case it was an attack. Only to be shocked when they arrived, finding an unconscious, beaten, and bloody Reynare being carried by an equally beaten and blood middled. Help her, please, middled begged, having barely managed to get away with Reynare when they started being overwhelmed. What the hell? How did you, Rias said in shock and disbelief, not expecting two fallen angels to suddenly appear, even worse with all the students around at the moment. Be bucko? Kaneko said in shock, tugging on Rias's skirt making the Gremory heiress look to see her rook's expression as she's pointing at middled. Looking at the lowly fallen angel, Rias's eyes widened in complete shock as she took a closer look at Middle. Seeing that while her clothes were torn and covered in blood, she had hardly any injuries at all, and the injuries she did have were actually healing themselves. The most shocking part being the flames that danced along her body and were healing her injuries. Reynare flew out of the way of several light bullets before creating a light spear, which she threw at a stray exorcist, stabbing it through their chest. 
repeating the process with three more exorcists before she had to block a strike from Donaseek. You should just give up now, you're outnumbered and outmatched. Donaseek said with a smirk, only to cry when Reynare slammed her head into his, knocking the traitor back. Yet you're the ones who are getting cut down. Retorted Reynare while seeing that Middle was killing her own share of exorcist and fallen angels, while also fending off Kalawarner, making Donaseek growl before charging her again. While Middle ducked under a swipe from Kalawarner's light spear, smirking as she slashed hers across the blue net's leg before slamming her fist into her face when she dropped to a knee. Look at you, on your knees and taking it in the face, must be a position you're familiar with. Taunted Middle, with Kalawarner glaring at her murderously as she threw her light spear at the lowly fallen angel. What? Jealous that I can actually get attention with my body, you little brat, Kalawarner said, with Middle jumping back and throwing her own light spear at her, which the blue net blocked with own, only to grunt in pain when Middle flew right at her smashing her foot into her head. What do I have to be jealous of? A traitorous slut that's probably only good as a stress reliever. Yeah a lot to be jealous of. Besides, who could ever deny a face like this? Middle said, flashing a cute expression before creating a light spear and threw it behind her impaling three fallen angels that tried sneak attacking her. Only to grunt in pain when Kalawarner rushed her while her back was turned, slashing her across the back with a light spear, before delivering an axe kick that sent her crashing into the ground. Let's see what they say when I cut your face up, said Kalawarner said, grabbing Middleton and throwing her against the church's wall, with the blonde fallen angel getting up only to see she was surrounded by fallen angels and exorcists. The sight making Middleton mentally curse before creating another light spear while hoping she and Reynare will be able to last long enough to either deal with Donaseek, Freed, and Kalawarner or escape. Reynare, meanwhile, was having her own trouble with her opponents, having to deal with Donaseek, Freed, as well as the other exorcists and fallen angels. Along with being forced onto the ground as she couldn't fight Donaseek and the fallen angels, otherwise she'll leave herself open to be shot at by the exorcists. The Ravenet quickly blocking another light spear before kicking the fallen angel into a group of exorcists, knocking them all to the ground then creating multiple light spears, which she launched around her to take out several opponents and giving her some more space, before crying out when Donaseek threw some dirt into her eyes and blinded her. Fucker! You know you can't beat me, so you have to cheat? Reynare shouted, while creating several light spears and having them float around her to act as a shield. You say cheating, I simply see another way to make sure we win, retorted Donaseek, not caring if they had to fight dirty, only caring about winning in the end with Reynare growling in annoyance before swiping her hand through the air and sending her light spears speeding towards her enemies before creating more. To fucking hell with this. Give me that, Freed shouted, getting annoyed that they hadn't already won, before taking another light gun away from another exorcist before shooting both of them at Reynare. The Ravenette having no time to react before she was shot in her left leg, right shoulder, and abdomen, making Reynare cry out in pain at being shot. Before grunting when Freed took the chance to rush up and slam his foot into her chest, sending her crashing into the ground, with the stray exorcist then walking up and kicking the downed Reynare repeatedly. Stupid. Fucking. Bitch. Should have just quit and let me fuck you, then you'd die quickly. Now I'm gonna show you what I do to all the shitty devils I killed. Freed shouted madly and cruelly before taking his light sword and stabbing it into Reynare's right leg, grinning crazily as she screamed. Reynare. Get away from her, you, Middle said, flying up away from her opponents to try and save Reynare only to gasp in pain when Kalawarner flew above her and smashed her foot into her back, sending Middle crashing into the ground. The lowly fallen angel when crying out when Kalawarner then stabbed her light spear into her lower back, smirking wickedly as she twisted the spear. What? Nothing smart to say now, you little bitch. Kalawarner taunted, with Middle glaring at her through the pain. Yeah, I'm gonna shove my spear so far up your ass, you'll be tasting it, you fucking. Said Middle through gritted teeth before Kalawarner stomped on her head lamming her face into the ground. Oi! Don't even fucking think about killing the little bitch. After the trouble they fucking caused, I'm taking my frustration out on both of them. But starting with this bitch first. Freed said grinning psychotically as he swung his sword and cut through Reynare's clothing, not caring if he also slashed her body, only caring if he could still use it. Whatever. But that doesn't mean the brat has to be in one piece. Kalawarner said stomping on Middle's back again making the blonde fallen angel grunt in pain before her eyes widened at the state Reynare was in, seeing she wasn't even conscious anymore, and what Freed was about to do. The sight terrifying and angering Middleton, even more so that she couldn't even move with Kalawarner pinning her to the ground. No, 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 Middleton mentally screamed, 
wanting to do something but was helpless to try and save Reynari before she suddenly started feeling incredibly warm with the heat rapidly increasing. Before to everyone's shock, a massive amount of fire exploded off of Middle's body, throwing Kalawarner off her, along with throwing back all the exorcists and fallen angels. Some of the ones who were standing the closest to the lowly fallen angel not being so lucky, and weren't immediately incinerated by the flames. With Middle gasping as she felt a sudden rush of energy, along with seeing her wounds were emitting flames as they sealed themselves shut. Shocked at the sight and the sudden flames, Middle quickly snapped out of it and rushed to grab Reynare, before flying away as quickly as she could while she had the chance. I need to get somewhere safe, fuck, we don't know where Naruto lives, thought Middle, cursing that they didn't learn where Naruto was staying before she remembered that he's also attending Kuo Academy. He should be there now, Middle thought, flying towards Kuo Academy hoping that Naruto will be there to help, and if not him then hopefully the devils will. Present. Don't just stand there, she needs help, Middle shouted at the devils, who were still staring at her in shock at the fire emitting off her body. The lowly fallen angel having ended up crashing in front of Kuo Academy, after being unable to keep supporting Reynare and using up the energy she gained. Leading to them crashing into the ground in front of several students, though at the moment Middle only cared about making sure Reynare survived. Why should we help either of you? How do we know this isn't just some trick you're pulling? Akano demanded, snapping out of her shock while giving them a hostile look. Akano, now's not the time, said Rias, looking at her queen sternly, before seeing Sona arriving with her own peerage, much to her relief. With Sona's peerage consisting of her queen Tsubaki Shinra, her bishops Momo Hanakai and Rei Kusaka, her knight Tomo Meguri, her rook Tsubasa Yura, and her pawn Ruruko Nomura. Tsubaki is a young bespectacled woman with fair skin long straight black hair that extends all the way down to her knees, with split bangs and heterochromic eyes, with a violet left eye and a light brown right eye which were covered by blue, semi-rimmed glasses with square lenses. Momo is a beautiful young girl with fair skin, long wavy white hair in a heimcut, and blue-green eyes. Rhea is a slim girl with fair skin, long brown hair that ends in two short braids and matching eyes. She also wears a blue headband. Tomo is a beautiful girl with fair skin, shoulder length, reddish brown hair, and brown eyes. Her hair features swept bangs and a single strand of hair sticking out from the top. Tsubasa is a tall girl with fair skin, blue, shoulder length hair, and matching blue eyes. And Ruruko is a short girl with brown hair and long twin ponytails and green eyes. She wears a pair of green clips in her hair and she also wears striped, green stockings. All of them having heard the crash as well and came rushing outside, only stopping once they saw what was happening with Rias's peerage and two injured fallen angels. Tsubaki, Tomo, Tsubasa, Ruruko start gathering everyone together and start either erasing memories or making a cover story for what happened. Momo, Rea, help pick her up and bring her to the orc clubhouse, Sona said, immediately giving out orders, with her peerage members nodding before they got started on fulfilling their orders, while Momo and Rea going over and picking Reynare up before heading towards the clubhouse. Given the way Sona saw Akano looking at the fallen angels, she figured it'd be better having her bishops look after her and see about healing her injuries. A sentiment Rias shared as she nodded at her friend in thanks before turning to her own peerage. Kaniko, Yuto, you both help the others in gathering everyone together and make sure this doesn't get leaked, as well as checking inside the buildings in case anyone inside saw something. I'll also be having Gasper locate and remove any images or videos that might have gotten leaked onto the internet said Rias, with Kaneko and Kiba nodding in confirmation before they began moving to help make sure this doesn't get out. While Rias, Sona, and a reluctant Akano had middled follow them into the clubhouse, with them entering to see Momo and Rhea had already taken Reynare to another room to start healing her. Though before they could begin questioning middled, Naruto and Izumi soon arrived. What the hell is going on? Naruto said, having had just arrived at the academy to find Izumi waiting for him at the gates only for them to then see Middleton and Reynare fall out of the sky in front of everyone. The sight shocking both of them, especially the whiskered blonde when he recognized Reynare and Middleton from the times his mother had Azazel help her locate and extract Vritra's other sacred gears. And who's she? questioned Izumi while looking at Middleton, before everyone was silenced when Rias gave a sharp whistle. Can we all just calm down? Rias shouted, wanting to get answers as well, but they couldn't if more interruptions kept happening while being pleased when she saw everyone take a moment to calm themselves. Middled. What happened to Reynare? What are you two even doing here? Naruto asked while looking at the fallen angel. We were sent here by Azazel Sama, after learning that she had a sacred gear, a powerful one from what Azazel Sama told us. We were ordered to bring her to the Grigori, should her sacred gear prove to be one she'd need help in learning to control, 
to ensure she didn't go berserk and start killing people. We were also meant to recruit a former nun that had been kicked out of the church as well, along with being in possession of a sacred gear called Twilight Healing. Middleton said while looking at Izumi, who was surprised at hearing this while she and Naruto also remembered meeting Asia and her destination. But, said Sona, feeling like there was a, but, coming. But someone altered our orders, making it seem like we were meant to kill her instead. Renare was leading the mission and with her loyalty to Azazel Sama and Shemazai Sama, she didn't even question the sudden change if it came from one of them. It was only after she saw you had arrived and were friends with her that Renare contacted Azazel Sama and learned the orders were altered. Said Middle, making the brunette gulp at how she could have been killed, while Naruto narrowed his eyes. By who? Demanded Naruto, swearing to find whoever tried killing his friend and make them suffer. We don't know, but we did learn the traitors were Donaseek and a stray exorcist freed Selzin, who's about as crazy as they come. Kala Warner also joined them, making her traitor as well. They attacked me and Reynare earlier, and while we did our best, but they had the numbers and didn't hesitate to fight dirty. We were nearly killed, when flames suddenly exploded out of me, giving me the chance to grab Reynare and get away, before ending up here since we didn't know where you lived. Middleton said, making the other frown at the mention of the flames. And the flames weren't magic or some kind of ability unique to you? Rias asked, with the fallen angel shaking her head. No, I've never learned magic before, and I only have the same standard abilities that every other fallen angel has. That was the first time I could do something like that, along with somehow being able to heal much faster. Replied Middleton, looking herself over and saw all her injuries were now completely gone. Middleton, were you a regular angel before becoming a fallen angel? Questioned Naruto, having a guess on the abilities she has with Middle looking at him with a raised brow. No, I wasn't. I was born a fallen angel, Middle said, with Akino's eye twitching at this given her own background, which confirmed Naruto's suspicions, along with Rias's and Sona's. I believe the pyrokinesis and pyrokinetic regeneration are an ability you inherited from your father. I'm guessing. And we only know of one family that has those same abilities, the Phoenix Clan. Sona stated, much to Middle's shock at hearing this. W what? No, no, no. No, no, no way. There's no way I could be half devil. I've never shown any weakness to holy or light based weapons, never showing signs of having demonic power, while my wings have black feathers and not made of fire, said Middleton, letting out her wings to prove her point, only to be shocked when rather than pure black feathered wings, they now look to be made of smoldering embers that were desperately trying to ignite. You were saying? Rias asked, while sighing at this new headache she now has to deal with. It's likely you're either a daughter or descended from a member of the Phoenix Clan, with your devil blood having been suppressed by your fallen angel blood, given it wouldn't be powerful enough to manifest with the light power you would have been born with as well, and with what happened, the stress and panic you must have felt is what gave it the kick it needed to awaken. Naruto explained, with Middle being shocked at learning she's a devil fallen angel hybrid. Before their attention turned to Momo and Rea exiting the room where Reynare was, shaking their heads sadly, making Middle's heart sink at what could have happened. We're sorry Kaichu, Rias Bucko, we did the best that we could, Rea said, having done all they could to heal Reynare. But her injuries were too severe for us to be able to heal, there isn't anything we can do. Said Momo, much to Middle's fear that Reynare could die before looking at Rias and Sona. There has to be something you can do, please save her, do something, anything, just please don't let her die. Middle begged, not wanting her friend to die, with Rias and Sona frowning as they looked at each other. You both know there's one thing you can do to help her, stated Naruto, making everyone look at him, while knowing what the Uzumaki meant on what both kings could do. You can't be serious. Why would Rias or Sona waste any of their pieces on helping a fallen angel? How do we know this still isn't some trick they're pulling? Akano said, not liking the idea of Reynare joining Rias's or Sona's peerage. So you'd let someone die just because they're fallen angel? Does that mean you should be left to die for having fallen angel blood? Or are you just a hypocrite that will let other fallen angels die, but not expect the same to happen to you? Retorted Naruto while glaring at Akano, angry that she just let someone die simply because they're a fallen angel, with his words stunning the group and making Akano momentarily back down in shock that he knew that. Akano, I know you don't like it, but Naruto's right. We can't just let someone die simply for what race they're a part of. I'll reincarnate Reynare as a member of my peerage, I'm also extending the offer to Middle as well. Given with her being a fallen angel and a descendant of the Phoenix clan, it'll put a target on her back for those that'll target Middle because of her heritage, Rias said, willing to reincarnate Reynare and given Middle's ancestry she'd have a target on her back, whether it be to harm her or exploit her, given how valuable a Phoenix clan member would be who didn't have the clan's protection. While I will reincarnate Reynare, 
The choice to join is yours Middled. Said Rias while looking at Middled, who took a few moments to think about it. I'll I'll join your peerage, replied Middled, knowing with the fact she's a devil fallen angel hybrid, even more so that she's descended from the Phoenix clan, it now put a giant target on her back. At least as a member of the Grammary heiress's peerage, it had lessened the risk of being targeted unless they wanted to get on the bad side of the Grammary clan and Mao Lucifer. Plus she'd at least get to stay with Reynare as well, who'd likely need a friendly face after waking up and learning she's now a devil. Wonderful, we can do so now, Rias said, smiling at Middled while summoning a pawn piece for Reynare and her second bishop for Middled. If you'll excuse me bucko, I think I'd be of more use helping the others in covering up this incident. Akano said neutrally with a short bow, making Rias frown before nodding as her queen left to help the others with the cover up. While the Ravenette can understand why Rias is reincarnating Reynare and Middled, that didn't stop the anger and betrayal she felt by it. I'm really sorry for that. Akino's behavior is inexcusable, she just has a hard time trusting fallen angels. I'm guessing you know why. Rias stated while looking at Naruto, figuring if he knew about Akino's heritage, then he likely also knows why she hates fallen angels, including her own blood. It's fine, I can understand her anger and it is justified but she shouldn't hold every fallen angel responsible or in contempt for the actions of the few. And yeah, I know the reason, I've met her cousin Suzaku and Barakil during my travels. Replied Naruto, being able to understand Akino's anger and hatred, given what happened to her mother and his parents. But it's also something you should handle, before Akino's hatred of fallen angels emotionally impedes her actions. Naruto added, also knowing that Akino couldn't keep hating all fallen angels, otherwise it'll only end badly, with Rias and nodding. Yeah, I know, said Rias, knowing she should have been helping all her peerage members with their problems, but she didn't like the idea of hurting them by making them relive the pain they went through. Seeing her expression, Naruto made a mental note to talk to Akano as well, given he went through the same thing she did and could understand what she's feeling. Especially since he could honestly see himself in Akino's place if things went even slightly different and he ended up blaming all devils in general for the death of his parents, rather than those in the Great King faction that were involved in it. As for the nun you mentioned, I'm guessing her name's Asia Argento. Izumi and I met her before coming to school. Revealed Naruto, with Izumi nodding in agreement. Yeah, after hearing she was looking for the abandoned church, Naruto-kun offered her the chance to stay at his home since we didn't want to risk anything happening to her. Izumi added, making Rias, Sona and Middled nod at hearing this. That may be for the best, as it gives her some place safe to stay until these rogues are dealt with. Sona said, knowing Asia will be a target as long as these rogue fallen angels and stray exorcists are around. Can that wait until after Reynare wakes up? Since we want to deal with them more than anything, said Middled, wanting to make sure she and Reynare got their pound of flesh, along with planning to contact Azazel and let him know what's happened. I'm sure that can be arranged, said Rias, not wanting to take any chances with these rogues and having both of them present would be incredibly helpful. Middled, Come meet me after Rias reincarnates you, if you'll be helping deal with the rogues then I can help you learn to start using your flames. Naruto said, with the lowly hybrid nodding at this, eager for the chance to learn to use her new powers, especially imagining LL the way she can make the traitors pay. I'll be going now to help with the cover up Rias, as you seem to have everything handled. But let me know if anything else comes up. I'll also make an excuse as for why you and Naruto won't be attending class. Said Sona with the redhead and whiskered blonde nodding in response as the sea tree heiress left. Later, uh, how am I still alive? Thought Reynare as she started waking up, feeling like she just got thrown through a steel wall and then run over by a semi-truck. Before the ravenette's eyes snapped open at the feeling of someone pressed up against her, Reynare looking only to see a naked Rias pressing her body against her own naked one. With the redhead also being awake and smiling at her. Glad to see you're finally awake. Rias stated at seeing her new pawn was awake after being unconscious the entire day. What the fuck? Reynare shouted, freaking out at suddenly waking up in bed, naked with the Grammary heiress beside her, before jumping out of bed and looking around rapidly with Rias getting up. Hey easy there, calm down, you're safe. Middle brought you here after managing to get away from the traitors. Said Rias, assuring her that she's safe, with Reynare calming down slightly at hearing Middle was fine as well. I'm I'm not a fallen angel anymore. At least not completely, am I? Reynare stated, given the injuries she suffered, she knew she should be dead, with the fact she isn't meant only one thing. No, you aren't. I reincarnated you as my pawn to save your life. I also reincarnated Middled as my bishop after we learned that she was really a devil fallen angel hybrid, as well as being descended from the Phoenix clan. Having awakened her devil blood and powers when the two of you were getting overwhelmed, which helped her escape with you. She's also contacted Azazel, 
who's given his blessing for both of you to be part of my peerage, since it'd be better than the alternative. Rias explained. Shocking Reynare at hearing Middled is actually a hybrid, before the redhead held out a Kuo Academy uniform for her. And here, I'm having someone currently repairing your outfit, so this'll have to do, said Rias, which Reynare took and began putting it on. Thanks, muttered Reynare, still feeling a bit upset at now being a devil, but knew there wasn't any other choice, especially if Middled did contact Azazel and get his blessing for them to be reincarnated. And while she'd prefer having stayed a fallen angel, Reynare much preferred still being alive especially as it'd give her the chance for some revenge on those traitors. Once dressed, Rias and Reynare exited the room and headed into the main clubhouse, finding the rest of her peerage present, including Middle along with Naruto and Izumi. With Middle smiling happily at seeing Reynare was awake before they all turned to Rias when she sat down. Now then, Middle has already told us everything about the traitors in the abandoned church and what we should be expecting. Akano, Kaneko, Yuto and I will be dealing with Freed as well as the lower-ranked fallen angels and the rest of the stray exorcists. Rias said, having already learned about the numbers they should be expecting, and she doubted they'd actually have any trouble, but she'd prefer being safe than sorry. I'll be dealing with Donaseek, while Izumi's offered to look after and protect Asia at my home, just in case. Said Naruto, the brunette nodding in agreement, wanting to make sure Asia is safe, along with taking the chance to get to know her and Kuroka better. Plus, getting the chance to bring the Neko show in on her harem plan. Leaving that bitch Kalawarner for us, Middle said with a dark smirk, eager to pay Kalawarner back. Perfect, I have a lot of aggression, I need to let it out now, said Reynare darkly, also eager to get some payback on the traitors. Then it seems we know what to do, and who we'll be dealing with. Stayed Rias, with everyone nodding in agreement as they stood up and left, with Rias, her peerage and Naruto heading to the abandoned church while Izumi headed for the Uzumaki's house. Later with Izumi after arriving at Naruto's manor, Izumi went inside to find Asia and Kuroka in the living room, sitting on a couch with the latter hiding her ears and tails for the time being. Izumi, glad to see you're back, Kuroka said while smiling at the brunette, which she returned. Hey Kuroka, Asia, nice to be see you too as well, how are you settling in Asia? Izumi asked while sitting beside Asia, who smiled at her. I'm doing very well, thank you, Kuroka has helped show me around and helped me get settled in a room. Though um she can be rather forward, replied Asia while blushing at the end since Kuroka had taken to teasing her, before letting out an eep, when Kuroka hugged her tightly pressing her breasts against the nun's back. Ooh, I can't help it nya, you're just so adorable Asia-chan and so fun to tease, and you look so cute when you blush, Kuroka said, smiling as she rubbed her face against Asia's, making her blush intensify while Izumi grinned at the sight. She'll definitely be perfect in helping make Naruto-kun a harem king, Izumi thought excitedly. So Asia, what exactly are you doing in Kuo? Izumi asked after Kuroka let the blonde girl go. I um I was transferred here from my old church after I after I used my power to heal someone they didn't want me to, said Asia, looking down sadly at how she'd been kicked out of the church for healing a devil. You mean your sacred gear? said Izumi, making Asia look at her in surprise. You know about sacred gears? Asia asked, not expecting that, with Izumi nodding in response. Yeah, we both do. I actually have one and so does Naruto-kun, he's even helping train me to awaken my sacred gear. Izumi replied, surprising Asia again before she looked at Kuroka. And do you have a sacred gear, Kuroka? Questioned Asia, with the Nekosho shaking her head before letting her ears and tails out. Nope, I'm just Naruto-kun's pretty kitty, but I don't mind being your kitty Asia-chan, Izumi-chan. Kuroka purred while laying across their laps making the nun blush brightly while Izumi grinned lewdly before looking at Asia, while Kuroka got up. And the person you healed it was a devil wasn't it? Izumi stated, with Asia nodding sadly. Yes, it was. I don't regret healing them, since I believe that the Lord gave me this power to help everyone, no matter who they were. Though it also lead to me not having any friends or anyone to talk to, having been seen as a holy maiden before then being treated as a monster and a witch that could heal anyone, even devils and fallen angels. I didn't mind though, since I like being able to help everyone, regardless of who they are or their race. But the church didn't agree and they they kicked me out. Asia said sadly, with Izumi and Kuroka looking at her in sympathy before the ravenette hugged her. Let me tell you something Asia Chan, I've seen plenty of people and supernatural beings, I've seen those who are real monsters despite being human. And you, you certainly are no monster, you're just a pure and kind-hearted girl that loves helping people. That doesn't make you a monster, it makes you special. Kuroka said, smiling at Asia while Izumi nodded in agreement and wrapped an arm around her. Kuroka's right. As for not having friends, well now you have me, 
Kuroka and Naruto-kun as well. We'll be your friends, who you can talk to whenever you want. I also have some more friends I can introduce you to, Izumi said, with Asia looking at them in surprise. Are really? You you want to be my friends? Asia asked hopefully, with Izumi and Kuroka nodding in response. Yes, we do. After all, who wouldn't want to be friends with someone so adorable, Kuroka said, grinning as she hugged Asia tightly and making the nun blush again, even more so when Izumi hugged her as well. Yeah, and I'm sure Naruto-kun will even be happy to help you better master your sacred gear, just like he's helping me. Then we can spend even more time together, said Izumi, with Asia blushing at the clo contact, but smiled happily at finally having friends. I'd like that, I'd really like that, said Asia before Izumi and Kuroka let her go as they continued talking and getting to know each other better. With Asia soon getting up to go to sleep, leaving only Izumi and Kuroka, with the brunette seeing her chance to bring Kuroka on board with her harem plan. So, Kuroka, do you like Naruto-kun? Izumi asked, with the ravenette nodding without hesitation. Of course I do. What isn't there to like, he's strong, brave, kind, protective, handsome, and so much more. Naruto-kun's exactly the kind of guy I've been looking for, and I have no intentions of letting him go. Said Kuroka, as while she wasn't sure she could say she loves Naruto, yet anyway, she did care about him a lot. And what if other girls wanted to be with him? Said Izumi, only to gasp when Kuroka slid a hand up her thigh with a sly smile on her face. Then I'd say even more fun. Why, interested in joining Naruto-kun and I when we finally begin making some kittens? Kuroka asked, making Izumi grin in excitement. I'd love to, but first I wanted to tell you something. After Naruto-kun returned, learning he was alive, I began making a plan. Since me and our other childhood friend, Irina, both had crushes on him and I don't want to make Naruto-kun choose between us or any other girl who likes him. So instead, I've been making a harem plan to make Naruto-kun a harem king. And since you've been with Naruto-kun for the past 10 years, I'm hoping you'd be able to help me and tell me about all the other girls he's met and have feelings for him. Izumi explained, the Nekosho looking at her in surprise before gaining a Cheshire grin on her face. If I wasn't saving myself for Naruto-kun, Izumi-chan, I'd throw you on the ground right now and make you scream my name. Said Kuroka, making Izumi blush brightly with a clouded look in her eyes. And no worries, I'd prefer Naruto-kun taking all my firsts anyway, no offense Kuroka-chan. And if you're in agreement, who are the girls you can tell me about that like Naruto-kun? Izumi asked eagerly, wanting to know about all the girls Naruto's met and have feelings for him. Get comfortable Izumi-chan, because it's quite a list. Kuroka said with an eager smile before she began telling Izumi of all the girls she knew of that had feelings for Naruto, and what she knew about them. Abandoned church Meanwhile at the abandoned church, Donaseek stood inside the church with a scowl on his face, angry that Reynare and Middle had managed to escape. All because the fucking human couldn't keep it in his damn pants, Donaseek thought, angered that they could have been able to kill both of them, yet Freed couldn't keep his own urges under control, letting them escape. Though he was pulled from his thoughts when he suddenly heard the sounds of fighting outside, making him summon a light spear. Whoever you are, you'll re ga Donaseek said only to choke when a glowing blue line wrapped around his neck, with more wrapping around his arms, legs and wings, suspending the fallen angel in the air. Trying to break free, Donaseek's eyes widened in panic when he couldn't access his power anymore or even create a light spear. His panic only growing when a shadowy aura wrapped around his body, further restraining him. Let me tell you how exactly you fucked up, Naruto said, stepping out of the shadows with four small chameleons with deformed faces on his hands and feet, this being one of his sacred gear the absorption line, which he can use in conjunction with Blaze Black Flare, Delete Field and Shadow Prison. Using Delete Field to seal away Donazik's abilities and Shadow Prison to further restrain him, having had no intentions of this being an actual fight, especially since fighting a fallen angel of Donazik's level wouldn't even be a warm-up for him, and planned for this to simply be a message. First, you're a traitor, and I really can't stand traitors, said Naruto, walking back and forth in front of Donaseek, with the fallen angels crying out when the lines around his legs tightened until they snapped in half. Second, you tried killing Reynare and Middle, but not before willing to let a lunatic try to rape them. Naruto continued, with Donaseek screaming in pain as his arms were broken this time. Third, you were going to kill an innocent girl by ripping out her sacred gear, probably even let that lunatic rape her as well said Naruto, with Donazik's pain increasing tenfold as rather than break his wings, the lines wrapped around them tightly before tearing them straight off. Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
And fourth, you thought you could kill one of my best friends. That alone sealed your fate, Naruto growled before activating Blaze Black Flare, forcing jet black flames into Donizik's mouth and down his throat. The fallen angel screaming in pure agony as he was burned from the inside out, while being muffled by Naruto's hand. Unable to do anything, but try and thrash about as the flames burned away at his body and his soul. I don't know where fallen angels go when they die, but wherever it is, don't worry, you'll be having company soon. Along with when I find out who you're working for, I'll send them screaming to meet you. Said Naruto, watching as Donisik finally died before dropping his lifeless corpse and sitting down to wait for the others. With Kalawarner while Kalawarner was returning to the abandoned church after going out to try and locate where Reynare and Middle were, only to come up empty handed. With any luck, the bitch is already dead and the stupid brat will turn up eventually, then I can finish the job. Thought Kalawarner, before her eyes widened when she arrived at the church, only to see the exorcists and fallen angels being wiped out. With the blue net crying out as before she could go and deal with the attackers, she was hit in the back by a flame coated light spear. Followed by Rainair dropping down from above, slamming her foot into the traitor's back. Hi. Remember us? Rainare said with a wicked grin as she and Middle stood over Kalawarner, whose eyes widened at seeing the Ravenette's new devil wings, and even more shocking was that Middle's were made out of fire. Surprised by the new look? Then you can die being surprised, said Middle, creating a flaming light spear which she stabbed into Kalawarner's left leg, relishing in her screams of pain. Ah. Fucking devil bitch. What you finally realized neither of you were made to be fallen angels and decided to join the fucking devils? Kalawarner said through gritted teeth, before screaming again when Reynare stabbed a light spear into her shoulder. We were better fallen angels than you could ever hope to be. Even as devils were still more fallen angel than you. You're just a traitor and for what? Because the chaos from some damn plan would be fun? Newsflash you stupid bitch. Anything we did would have reflected badly on the entire Grigori. All fallen angels would be targeted. Your plan would have gotten us all killed. Reynare shouted, glaring at Kalawarner before stabbing another light spear into her other shoulder. At least I'll die a real fallen and not some reincarnated bitch, retorted Kalawarner before screaming again as Middle stabbed another spear into her other leg. No, you'll die as you lived. Being penetrated, Middle said, stabbing a flaming light spear through Kalawarner's abdomen, with the blue net screaming in agony as she started burning from the hellfire, while Reynare grabbed her wings. As for dying as a real fallen angel, that won't be happening since I'll be taking your wings, given how you don't deserve to die with them. Reynare said before slicing both of her wings off, increasing her pain even further. The two watching and waiting until Kalawarner stopped moving and was little more than a charred husk, with Reynare then promptly stomping on her head, stabbing her heel through the traitor's skull and crushing it. Just wanting to make sure she's dead, stated Reynare to Middle's look, making the lowly hybrid smirk before they went to meet up with the others. Arriving to see Rias and the rest of her peerage dealing with the last of the exorcists and fallen angels. You all are certainly efficient, Middle stated, stepping over some of the bodies, as Rias looked at them while Akano, Kaneko and Yuto finished the last of the enemies. We've had a lot of time to improve ourselves, Rias replied, pointing her thumb behind her and firing a blast of her power of destruction at a stray exorcist. Did you make sure to kill Freed? Reynare asked while looking for Freed's body, given he was the most dangerous one among them. If you mean the one that cursed a lot, I think I cut off his head," said Yuto while pulling his sword out of a fallen angel, having used his holy eraser sword to negate their light weapons. Oh yeah, there it is," said Middle, spotting where Freed's body and severed head were, glad to see he was dead as well. That's the last of them, bucko," Kaneko said, killing the last of the exorcists. Oofufufufu, my that was certainly fun and quite the stress reliever," said Akano with a faint blush having focused mainly on the fallen angels to help calm herself down from the anger she's felt since Rias reincarnated Reynare and Middle. Good, then let's see if Naruto's finished as well, Rias said, pleased to see the results of her peerage's past training with how easily they were able to handle the exorcists and fallen angels. With everyone heading into the church, only to see Naruto sitting down and Donizik's body on the ground. I take it you all dealt with your targets, Naruto stated while standing up, getting nods from the devils. Yes, and it looks like you've dealt with yours, so, it looks we're all done here for the night. Good work everyone, said Rias, smiling at her peerage before looking at Reynare and Middle. Reynare, Middle, do either of you have anywhere to stay? Rias asked, making both former fallen angels frown. No, we don't, Middle replied since they'd just been using the church as their base until they were done here. We didn't think we'd be staying in Kuo for long, 
so we never bothered finding a more suitable and permanent base. Said Reynare, with the redhead frowning at this since she wasn't going to have them leave if they didn't have anywhere to go. You can stay at my place, I have plenty of room, so you'd both be more than welcome to stay. Naruto offered, getting surprised looks from the others. Really? Reynare asked, not expecting the offer, with Naruto nodding response. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. And like I said, I have plenty of room at my house, much more than I know what to do with. Even with Asia staying there now. Naruto replied, wanting to help them, along with using it as a chance to earn Rias's trust, while the Grammary heiress frowned at this before looking at Reynare and Middled. If you both want to, you're welcome to stay with Naruto either permanently or until you find your own residence. It's perfectly fine with me if you wish to stay with him. Said Rias, reluctant to let them stay with Naruto since they were now members of her peerage, but she did see it as a chance to see if Naruto's really trustworthy. Well in that case, yeah, it'd be nice to staying with you, Naruto. Middled said, with Reynare nodding in agreement. Yeah, it'd definitely be better than staying here, along with seeing Asia again. Said Reynare, wanting to also see how Asia's doing. Great, then let's go, and I guess I'll see the rest of you tomorrow. Naruto said, motioning the two to follow him, while waving to Rias, Akano, Kaneko and Yudo. Yes, you will. Take care until then, Rias replied. With everyone exchanging farewells before heading their separate ways to go home and call it a night, while Naruto escorted Reynare and Middle to his home. You live here? Reynare asked in disbelief as she and Middle followed Naruto into his house, not expecting it to be this big or grand, with Naruto seeing that Kuroka and Asia were likely asleep now and Izumi had gone home. Yeah, along with Asia and a friend of mine as well. You both are also welcome to stay as long as you like, or simply live here permanently if you want, replied Naruto not minding if they decided they wanted to live here permanently. Are you kidding? The entrance alone is bigger than my old room? Hell yeah, I'd want to live here, Middle said, definitely not minding the idea of living here, with Reynare nodding in agreement liking the chance to live here. Great, just pick a room you want for tonight and then we'll see about getting you both some stuff. Though how are you both feeling? With everything that's happened, being betrayed and nearly killed, finding out you're a devil fallen angel hybrid, and now being reincarnated as a devil? Are you both alright? Naruto asked as they sat down in the living room, knowing they've both been through a lot today. With Reynare and Middle sagging slightly in their seats, as everything that had happened fully began setting in for them. It's definitely a lot to take in. I'm honestly beating myself up for not realizing Donaseek and Freed were traitors, since Donaseek was always a battle maniac that only cared about fighting. While Freed was a psychopath that only cared about killing. While Kalawarner, she had been loyal to Azazel Sama, but mostly since she was able to do whatever she wanted. So it's also not surprising that she'd betray the Grigori if she got a better offer. So the betrayal itself wasn't really surprising in hindsight. Reynare replied, with middled nodding in agreement. Yeah, what we're really angry about is them nearly killing us and even going to let that psycho freed rape us. As for finding out I'm half devil, that's something I never would have expected, let alone that I'm related to the Phoenix clan. I always thought my two san was just some random human or another fallen angel my ka san slept with, not a Phoenix said Middled, still surprised that she's related to the Phoenix clan. I know the feeling. Having things change all of a sudden, learning different secrets, it can leave you feeling tired. Said Naruto, perfectly understanding the feeling, given he felt it when he first met Ophis and learned about the supernatural world. And what about being devils now? Naruto asked since that's also a big change to go through, from being fallen angels to being devils. That's going to take some getting used to. I'm just glad I still have my original wings. Said Reynare having tried testing to see if she still had her black feathered wings, feeling relieved and happy she still had them in addition to her new devil wings. With Middled also having her original wings, though they still looked like they were made of embers and ashes with the awakening of her devil blood. I actually don't feel that different, besides the obvious, and the new power is something I'm really liking so far, Middled said, smirking as she created a ball of hellfire, knowing it'll make her light spears even deadlier. Well look at it this way, as devils, you'll have the chance to learn plenty of new abilities and powers, allowing you to grow stronger as well as improving what you already know. And don't get cocky middled, just because you have the same powers as the rest of Fenix clan doesn't make you invincible. You still need to learn to use it, master it, then keep improving on it. Which is why tomorrow, we'll be continuing your training. You'll also be joining us, Reynare. Naruto said while being glad that tomorrow is Sunday, giving them even more time to train, making the two look at him in surprise. You're still going to train me? Middled asked, not expecting that, having only thought he'd help her gain some control over her flames and then leave her training to Rias. And you want me to join you? 
asked Reynare, also not expecting him to offer to train her, given they were only really acquaintances. Yes, I'm going to still train you middled. And eyes, I'm going to train you as well Reynare. Both of you have a lot of potential and I want to help you both reach it. Especially since you both didn't still go along with the plan to kill Izumi and extract Asia's sacred gear. Naruto replied, seeing that both of them had potential to become incredibly powerful. Even though the only reason we didn't, is because you showed up? Reynare asked with a raised brow, knowing if Naruto hadn't shown up, they likely wouldn't have checked in with Azazel and learned the truth, instead simply continuing with the original plan. Yes, because that means both of you are also smart enough to not try pissing me off. Unlike those idiots that are now dead. Said Naruto, making Reynare and Middle laugh slightly since it was true, even after they learned Naruto was here and what he's capable of, Donaseek, Freed and Kalawarner were still going to try going after Izumi and Asia. Okay, if you're offering to continuing teaching me, I'm ready to learn. Middle replied eagerly, knowing with Blaze Black Flair, Naruto had to know a lot about using fire in combat and different ways to use it. Yeah, it'd be nice to get started on seeing what I can do now. Added Reynare, also eager for the chance to train with Naruto. I'm glad to hear it. We'll start tomorrow, where you'll also be training with Izumi. For now, get some rest. Naruto said, with Reynare and Middle nodding in response before he showed them where some empty rooms they could use were, with the girls taking two on the first floor that connected together. Once that was done, Naruto headed up to his own room and stripped down to his boxers before getting into bed, falling asleep soon after. Time skip one day the next day. Naruto woke up early before taking a shower and getting dressed before heading downstairs, only to stop when he saw Asia was already awake and in the kitchen. Asia? Naruto said, getting her attention, with the blonde nun looking at him in surprise, not expecting him to be awake already? And Naruto? I wasn't expecting anyone to be up yet. I, um I was preparing breakfast for you and Kuroka. Asia said while biting her lip nervously, having wanted to repay his kindness and letting her stay here, making Naruto frown as he walked over to her. You didn't have to do that, I'm not expecting you to do anything for me and neither is Kuroka. Said Naruto, not wanting her to think she has to help around to stay here. B but I want to thank you for letting me stay here and I don't want to seem ungrateful. Said Asia, only for Naruto to smile at her. You don't have to thank me Asia, I was happy to help you since you were lost and didn't have anywhere else to go. I wasn't expecting anything in return, all I needed was making sure you had somewhere to stay and were safe. Naruto said making Asia look at him in surprise before she smiled brightly at the Uzumaki. Thank you, Naruto. But I still want to do something and I already started, Asia said, wanting to at least finish making the breakfast she started on. Okay, but it let me help you, since we actually have two new guests staying here that came back with me last night. Said Naruto, getting a curious look from the nun, wondering who else was here, before nodding since she'd only been expecting Naruto, Kuroka and herself. Um, Izumi and Kuroka also told me about your sacred gear, and that you're helping train Izumi to awaken and use hers. Asia said as they began preparing breakfast. Yeah I am, Kuroka and I are also helping teach Izumi magic and martial arts so she doesn't become overly reliant on her sacred gear and have other abilities to fall back on. Are you interested in joining? Naruto asked while looking at Asia, who looked unsure at the idea of learning to fight. I'm I'm not sure. I wouldn't mind learning to better control my sacred gear, but I don't know if I'd be any good at fighting replied Asia, with Naruto nodding and understanding. That's fine, we can just focus on your sacred gear, but the offer to learn magic and martial arts will be open, even if it's only defensive, and I'm sure you'd be a great fighter Asia, after all, you're already pretty strong to have a sacred gear and use it to help people, regardless of who they are. That not only makes you strong, but shows you do everything you can to protect the people you care about, said Naruto while smiling at the girl, making Asia blush lightly at his words. Th thank why you, and Naruto. I all have to th think about it though. Asia said, now thinking about accepting his offer, but wanting time to decide. Of course, the offer is open whenever you're ready. Naruto said, making Asia smile slightly and nod before they heard two steps of footsteps approaching. Looking, they saw Reynare and Middle coming out of their rooms, with Asia's face turning bright red at the sight of them. The reason being Reynare who was completely naked, showing off her large breasts and bare snatch, and Middle who was only wearing her lingerie, which was white with black lace. Eep. Asia said before quickly covering her eyes, not expecting the guests Naruto mentioned to be in their underwear or lack thereof. Is that really necessary to come out like that? Naruto asked, not that phased by it, given he's already seen plenty of girls and women in their underwear and being completely naked, while Reynare and Middle shrugged. Hey, not our fault all we had to wear was our clothes from yesterday, replied Middle, 
given their old clothes needed to be repaired from their fight, leaving them only the Kuo Academy girls' uniforms Rias gave them, which were currently covered in blood. And do you really think with my usual outfit I actually wear underwear at all? Renare asked rhetorically while crossing her arms under her breasts. It's nice to see you again Asia. Renare add while smiling at the blonde nun, happy she's safe and no longer in danger from the traitors, with Asia uncovering her eyes before they widened as she finally recognized the ravenette. Our Renare, said Asia, now really surprised since she didn't think Renare would be one of the guests and who she guessed was another fallen angel. Yeah, I was gonna tell you that the guests I was talking about are Renare and her friend Middle. Though they aren't fallen angels anymore, at least not entirely, said Naruto, making Asia look at three only to be shocked when Renare and Middle revealed their devil wings. With the three then explaining what had happened with the traitors and what would have happened to her if they didn't learn someone had altered their orders. Something that horrified Asia at how close she came to dying and having her sacred gear extracted. You don't have to be afraid Asia, we never actually wanted to hurt you, we just thought we were following orders. Renare assured, with middle nodding in agreement. And I'm sorry that me and Izumi lied to you yesterday about not knowing where the abandoned church was, but neither of us wanted to risk anything happening to you, said Naruto, with Asia shaking her head before smiling shakily at them. It's it's fine Naruto, in fact, I should be even more grateful that you took me in to make sure nothing happened to me. And I don't blame you Renare or you middled, I'm also thankful to both of you for wanting to help keep me safe, and I'm glad both of you are still alive. Asia replied, thankful for them in preventing her from being captured and killed. You don't have to thank us Asia, we're just glad everything worked out. Naruto said while putting a hand on her shoulder, with Renare and middled nodding in agreement. Yeah, it honestly could have ended a lot worse, but we're all still alive, so that's good, stated middled. Agreed. Said Reynare as even if they're devils now, they're still alive at the very least. Now you could you both get dressed in something. Said Naruto while looking at Reynare and Middle, making both girls smirk before the lowly hybrid put her hands on her hips while Reynare leaned forward and pushed her breasts up. Why? Are we perhaps distracting you? Middle asked while twirling around and sticking her ass out. While I don't mind admiring beautiful girls, I don't want Asia passing out. Naruto said while glancing at Asia whose entire face was bright red, making Renare and Middle giggle. Fine, we'll go put something on, but if you like admiring us so much, maybe we should dress like this more often. Even better if you like what you see Asia Chan. Renare said slyly while winking at the nun, getting another, eep, from Asia as she quickly went back to making breakfast, with Naruto joining her once Renare and Middle had left to get dressed. Not long after, Kuroka came down while thankfully dressed in her kimono, sparing Asia from further embarrassment. With Renare and Middle soon coming out as well, now dressed in some casual clothing, though both girls momentarily froze when they saw Kuroka. Recognizing her as an SS class stray devil and one of the underworld's most wanted criminals. Managing to recover and act normally, given they doubted Naruto would have Kuroka around if he thought she was a threat. With Naruto and Asia soon finishing breakfast as they all sat down once the table was set, only to hear a knock at the door, making the Uzumaki get up to answer it. Being immediately greeted by Izumi hugging him tightly with a large smile on her face and carrying several bags with her. Izumi, I'm surprised to see you here this early, not that I don't mind. Though what's with the bags? Naruto said while hugging his friend, confused at the bags she's carrying. Sorry, but I couldn't wait to get here later. As for the bags, after talking to my parents, I was able to convince them to let me stay here for a while since it's been so long since we've seen each other. So you'll be seeing a lot more of me, Naruto-kun. Izumi said happily that her parents were allowing her to stay with Naruto, with Naruto being surprised at hearing this before smiling. That's great, it'll be nice having you stay here, even better that it'll provide more time for your training, replied Naruto, happy that the brunette will be staying here, both so they could reconnect some more and for her training. And so Kuroka-chan and I can better work on the harem plan, Izumi added mentally, knowing she and Kuroka will be better able to plan out the details of the harem plan with her staying here. You can just set your stuff down until you pick a room you want, since we were just about to have breakfast. Naruto said, with Izumi nodding as she put her bags down by the stairs before joining Naruto and the others in the dining room. Izumi, it's nice to see you again, and that you'll be staying here, Asia said while smiling at Izumi, having heard what they were saying and like that her friend will be staying with them. Agreed, it'll be so much fun having you here Izumi-chan, added Kuroka with a smirk having already known Izumi planned to talk to her parents about staying here after she was brought in on her harem plan. Thanks, it's nice seeing you all here as well, and I'm sure it will be Kuroka-chan. Izumi replied with her own smirk, while also being pleased to see that Renare and Middle are apparently now living here as well. 
Reynare and Middle traded a look before smirking at each other, being able to tell Izumi and Kuroka had ulterior motives and were likely planning something involving Naruto. Something they were sure would be rather entertaining to watch unfold. Later after finishing breakfast, Naruto and the girls headed out into the backyard to begin their training, with the Uzumaki going over to the training equipment before opening a box and pulling out several metal rings. Before we get started, all of you put these on your wrists and ankles. Naruto said while tossing four rings to Izumi, Asia, Reynare and Middled, getting confused looks from the girls before they slipped them onto their wrists and ankles. The moment they were on, the symbols on the rings lit up as they suddenly shrank and fastened themselves to fit perfectly. Before the girls all yelped in surprise when they suddenly fell to their hands and knees, making Kuroka snicker slightly since she's seen it happen before to those Naruto helps train. WH what the hell are these things? Middled exclaimed while trying to stand up, only to feel like she had boulders tied to her arms and legs. They're called iron rings, training tools that are used in martial arts to harden the muscle, skin and bone, as well as strengthen the arms and legs. But I improved them with sealing magic, making them register the wearer's height, weight, mass, strength and body types. Then the weight of each ring is increased to the point that the wearer can barely move, but also isn't hindered by them. Making them even better for improving your speed and strength. Naruto explained while watching as the girls managed to eventually pick themselves up, with Izumi and Asia taking a little longer than Reynare and Middle due to being human. And why do we need to wear them? Questioned Reynare as she struggled for a moment to move her arms with how heavy the rings were, wondering why she and Middle needed to wear them when they were already pretty fast and strong. Because even if you're already fast or strong, it doesn't mean you shouldn't still try improving yourselves. Plus, if you're faster and stronger than your enemies, then you won't have to worry about them catching or hitting you. While for you Asia, it'll help you be able to move faster to heal your allies and dodge attacks. Also, you only have to wear the rings during the training, that way you aren't being hindered in actual combat or anything else. Said Naruto, making the girls nod in understanding while he gave them a few moments to get used to the added weight. Now then, we'll be starting off with some basic exercises to help you get used to the rings before moving on to lessons. Though Reynare, Middled, do either of you specialize in anything? Naruto asked, wanting to know what they're capable of. I'm able to make multiple light spears at once, rather than just one at a time, along with being pretty good at magic. Said Reynare, given most fallen angels could only create a single light spear, she's able to create several at the same time, along with having learned a bit of magic as well. I just have the standard powers of a fallen angel, along with the hellfire, immortality, and control over the wind I now have from awakening my devil blood. Middleton said, with the whiskered blonde nodding at this. Okay Reynare. You'll train along with Izumi under Kuroka to start learning more magic. I also have several books you both can read to learn more and better understand the various different types of magic. While middled, we'll be working on you learning to manipulate your hellfire in different ways. Said Naruto, with Reynare nodding at this, liking the chance to learn more types of magic, while middled looked at him with a raised brow. Don't I just shoot fire at enemies or coat my light spears with them? What else would there be to learn? Middled asked having thought it'd just be getting better control over manipulating her flames, not using it in different ways. Rather than respond, Naruto held out his hand before creating black flames, which soon began shrinking and condensing into a small orb in his hand. Before he then threw it up into the sky, and to the amazement of the girls, aside from Kuroka who's already seen this, the tiny orb exploded into a massive firestorm of black flames. Anyone can learn fire magic and simply shoot it out at enemies, but it takes skill and training to really master it. Try throwing a light spear at me, said Naruto, much to their shock, with Middle looking at the others who also weren't expecting this. Looking back at Naruto and seeing him nod encouragingly, the lowly hybrid created a light spear before throwing it at him. Only for them to be surprised that the spear was burned away by black flames before it could touch him. Manipulating your flames for both offense and defense, as well as finding other new ways to use them outside of simply firing them at enemies is what helps show your ability and imagination. The only limits you have are the ones you believe you have. Naruto said, looking at them and seeing they were listening intently to his words. For you Asia, your sacred gear lets you heal any living creature, right? Said Naruto while turning to the nun, who nodded. Yes, but I'm only able to heal injuries, it can't regrow lost limbs, get rid of exhaustion, or cure sicknesses. Asia replied, knowing there were still limits to what twilight healing can do. Alright, then you'll work on expanding the range of your healing aura making it so you don't have to be near an ally to heal them and be capable of healing multiple targets at once. And work on thinking of ways you only target allies, so you don't end up healing enemies as well. Naruto said, knowing with her kind nature, Asia's sacred gear could also end up healing enemies, which would be better to avoid. Alright. 
said Asia with a nod, wanting to improve her sacred gear so she can better help her friends. And Izumi, you'll be continuing the training you've already started with Kuroka and I and since Reynare and Middle have joined us, we can also work on sparring so you can start getting some experience in fighting, while Asia will be on standby to heal any injuries, said Naruto since he and Kuroka weren't good opponents to spar against, unless they really held back. With the girls all nodding and understanding of what their training will be like, before Naruto motioned for them to get started on the physical exercises. Later after training until the afternoon, everyone went inside to rest and have lunch before Naruto and Izumi took Asia out to show her around Kuo. While Reynare and Middle had gone to meet with Rias to get started on their devil duties. With Naruto and Izumi currently showing Asia the plaza with all the restaurants and shops there. Alright, so what do you want to get Asia? Naruto asked while looking at the blonde nun, who was surprised at the sudden question. What do I want to get? asked Asia, not expecting them to actually get her anything, just that they were helping show her around. Yeah, what do you want to get here? Like clothes, things to decorate your room, school supplies? asked Izumi since Asia would also be starting at Kuo Academy tomorrow, along with Reynare and Middelt. And don't worry about money since I'll be paying for everything, Naruto added, which only made Asia look at them in worry. And no, that's fine, you really don't have to get me anything, you both are already doing so much, I don't want to take advantage of either of you. Asia said, not wanting them to do even more for her than they've already done. Asia, we're friends and helping each other is what friends do, no matter what they need help with. You're not taking advantage of us by needing to get stuff to feel more comfortable here. Besides, you're also staying at my house, so it's also my responsibility to make sure you're comfortable and have everything you need. But mostly because I want to help you Asia, so you don't have to worry about not having something you need. Really, I don't mind helping you buy whatever you need to get. Said Naruto with Asia being surprised and touched by his words. Um well I do need more clothes and I do need s stuff for the academy. Asia admitted, knowing there was a lot of things she needed, especially if she'll be starting at Kuo Academy. Great. Then let's go, I know some great clothing stores we can go to, said Izumi before grabbing Asia's hand and quickly running off to the stores with Naruto following after them. Orc Clubhouse meanwhile, Reynare and Middle were being given some flyers to pass out to potential clients, after Rias explained the finer details of their duties to them. So we just hand these out to people and wait to be summoned, and if they're satisfied they'll form a contract with us. Middle stated, with Rias nodding in response. That's right, most of the requests should be pretty simple ones that anyone can do, while being able to get more as you advance in rank. Like me, though I usually have clients that want me remove curses from cursed items or defeating monsters that are attacking the client. Replied Rias, with both girls nodding and understanding at what they were supposed to do, before leaving to go hand out at the leaflets. Not long after they left, Rias saw a magic circle appear before the image of her brother appeared over it. Nisama, I'm surprised to see you calling. Is this about who you'll be sending to Kuo? Rias asked, with Sears X nodding in response. Yes, it is. After going through some potential candidates, Seraphal and I have chosen to send Syroorg and his peerage to Kuo to keep an eye on Naruto Uzumaki replied Sears X, causing the Grammary heiress's eyes to widen. Are you sure sending Syroorg is the best idea? questioned Rias, given the fact that Naruto is the reason both his father and their ancestor were now dead. Which also technically made Syroorg the new Lord Bael, but given he's still relatively young and isn't ready to take up the position, he's instead having someone acting as leader in his stead. With Syroorg having chosen hers and Sears X's mother, Venelana Grammary, given she's a Bael by birth and possessed the power of destruction. Something that helped placate the rest of the Bael clan. And while Syroorg hadn't been particularly close to his father or ancestor, they were still family and he had more interactions with them than Rias did. So she wasn't sure if he'd be able to resist attacking Naruto. Something she really didn't want to happen, not wanting to see the result of a fight between Naruto and her cousin. I understand your concern, but I believe Syroorg will be able to control his emotions and act professionally while in Kuo. But for the sake of secrecy and ensuring that the rest of the underworld doesn't know that Naruto is in Kuo, we didn't tell him why he's being sent to Kuo. So, you and Sona will have to tell him. And he should be arriving tomorrow. Sears X said sheepishly, with Rias's eye twitching in annoyance at hearing this. Gee, thanks Nibaka, leaving me to tell Syroorg that Naruto's in Kuo. I can see just how much you care. Rias said sarcastically in a bitter tone, internally loving the sight her brother crumble under her words before ending the call. The redhead sighed as she leaned back in her chair, before getting up and began stripping to go take a shower and relax, doubting she'll have many moments to relax soon. With Naruto, Izumi, and Asia Izumi and Asia had gone to several stores, with the brunette managing to get the nun to finally relax and start getting stuff she wanted. 
with Naruto not being bothered by how much the girls got, while also teleporting everything they bought back home to save them the trouble of carrying everything. With the trio soon leaving the plaza and continued showing Asia around Kuo, eventually ending up at the arcade. Ooh, come on Asia. Me, Naruto-kun and our other friend used to go here all the time when we were little, Izumi said in excitement at getting the chance to go here with Naruto and Asia. And I remember you'd always want to go do something else, after me or Irina beat you at too many games. Naruto said with a smirk, making the brunette give him the stink eye at the reminder. Well, I've been practicing, so it'll be you losing this time, Izumi retorted confidently. We'll see, Naruto said still smirking. I'm I'm not sure, I've never really been to an arcade. I don't think it'll be any good, said Asia, not sure about trying to play games, only for Naruto and Izumi to grab her hands. Don't worry, we can show you how to play them, said Izumi while smiling at the blonde girl, with Naruto nodding in agreement. Yeah, it's not that hard, just do the opposite of anything Izumi does. Naruto added, with the brunette punching him in the arm in response. Oh okay. Asia said while smiling hesitantly upon seeing that her friends would help her learn, before they entered the arcade. Once inside, Naruto and Izumi took Asia to the different games and showed her how they were before playing them themselves to give her a demonstration before the nun try herself. Surprised and impressed when Asia showed to be rather good at some of the games. After showing her how all the games worked the three each began playing and competing against each other. With Izumi being pleased that she was even able to beat Naruto at a few of them and get the high score. Before the brunette went to a prize grabber, spotting a Pikachu plush before putting in a coin, with Izumi moving the claw over the mouse plush, grinning as it grabbed the toy and dropped it down the chute. Asia, look at what I just won, Izumi said, smiling at her friend and showing her the plush, with Asia smiling at the cute toy only to be surprised when Izumi held it out for her. Here, I want you to have it, so you'll always have something to remember today, said Izumi, surprising Asia as she took the plush before smiling brightly at Izumi. Thank you Izumi, I love it, I'll call it Rakshu Kun. Asia said while smiling at her gift, making Izumi giggle at the name. I'm glad you like it, this has been a really fun day with you and Naruto kun. Izumi said while smiling at Asia, making the other girl blush lightly. I should be thanking you and Naruto for being so kind to me, said Asia, which Izumi waved off. You don't have to thank us Asia, we're friends and as long you're happy we're happy too, stated Izumi. Izumi's right, you never have to thank us for anything Asia, just enjoy yourself. Naruto added walking up to the girls before showing he won his own prize, a plush of the fire dragon king Igneal from Fairy Tale, which he then held out to Izumi while getting a raised brow from the brunette. Did you get that just because I have a dragon type sacred gear? Izumi asked. Maybe. Do you not like it? Naruto asked, with Izumi immediately snatching the toy. I never said that, said Izumi while smiling at her gift, making Naruto smile as well. They're both so kind and caring. I'm really happy they're my friends. Thank you Naruto, Izumi, for being my friends. Thought Asia while blushing as she looked between the two. The trio played a couple more games before taking their leave as they continued exploring Kuo and showing Asia around. Later once it started getting late, the trio returned to the Uzumaki's house, where they were greeted by Reinare and Middle in the living room. With Izumi and Asia going to set up their rooms and put away everything they'd gotten while shopping. By the way, what floor are you on Asia? Izumi asked, curious about which room Asia is staying in. Oh, I'm, um I'm actually on the second floor J just down the hall from Naruto's room. Replied Asia while blushing slightly at being on the same floor as Naruto's room, with Izumi smiling brightly at this and taking her hand. Great, I plan to stay there too. We can have our rooms be right next to each other, Izumi said as they went up the stairs, with the brunette grabbing her bags on the way up. So, what did you two do today? Naruto asked while sitting in a chair and looked at Reinare and Middled on the couch, with the two shrugging in response. Nothing much, really. We just passed out leaflets to people and waited to be summoned. We both actually got our first contracts today. I was summoned to help a college student that's studying abroad by getting her notes and helping her confess to her crush. Which helped get me a contract with her when everything went smoothly. Reinare replied, though she had been confused with how they both were constantly wearing armor. I was summoned to cosplay for a photo shoot, which was pretty easy since I'm just too cute. Said Middle with a smirk before flashing an adorable expression, making Naruto laugh lightly. Well I'm glad things turned out alright for the both of you, and that you managed to form contracts with clients. Said Naruto before turning serious. I'm sure you both are also wondering about Kuroka? Naruto asked rhetorically, given she's still a wanted criminal in the underworld and an SS class stray devil. Yeah, we didn't say anything since you must have a good reason to have her around. Middle said, 
with Reynare nodding in agreement. She's not really guilty of her crimes is she? Stated Reynare, figuring that Kuroka wasn't actually guilty of killing her king. Oh no, she killed her former king without hesitation, but it wasn't because she was drunk on power like everyone believes or claims. I won't say why, since that's Kuroka's choice to tell you what really happened, but she had a very good reason for what she did and I trust her completely. And will do everything I can to prove her innocence, replied Naruto, making Reynare and Middle curious of what really happened but nodded in understand, while accepting Naruto's words that she wasn't a threat. Out of curiosity, how did you think of that attack you showed us in that flame armor? Middle asked curious of how Naruto thought of doing that with his flames. I'm just good at thinking outside the box on ways to use my sacred gears and magic, which helps with how sacred gears can change to reflect the thoughts and feelings of their user. Though most of the attacks I've created have come from replicating attacks and abilities I've seen before, with the flame armor actually being inspired by a Tanuki Hanyo I once met that specialized in sand-based attacks, along with anime, manga and other pop culture media with the other half of the inspiration for the flame armor being the Protega Diabolica from the Harry Potter series. Naruto said, much to both girls' disbelief. Seriously? You get inspiration from pop culture? Questioned Reinare, with the Uzumaki nodding in response. Yes, you'd be surprised at the inspiration you can get from them with how many involve supernatural creatures, gods, and big fighting scenes. I have a lot of them if either of you want to give them a try and see if they give you any ideas. Said Naruto, making the girls hum in thought while considering the offer since it could help them. Why not? It can't hurt to see if it can help. Reinare said with a shrug, since it never hurt to try new things and see what you can learn from them. Yeah, and if you really got inspiration for attacks from that stuff, then I definitely have to give it a try. Added Middled, wanting to be able to use her hellfire and control over the wind the way Naruto's able to use his own flames. I'm sure you both won't regret it, Naruto said with a smirk, knowing how useful manga and anime can be. Plus the chance to get them hooked on it as well as too good of an opportunity to pass up for the whiskered blonde. The end thanks for watching subscribe our channel for more.